What makes a consistent golfer? A consistent golfer is someone who hits the same type of golf shot time after time. Now I'm talking about hitting it right down the middle with a nice crispy divot. You get over the ball, you don't do a whole lot of thinking, you swing and you strike one. And that is what we're after for in golf. A beautiful feeling golf shot. The way you do that and the way I teach my students to get this feeling time and time again is just two things. And the drill that I'm going to show you today will get you experiencing that feeling. So the first thing we have to look at is creating consistent contact. The number one thing I'll teach my students to get consistent contact, and this is a little mind blowing here because it goes against the grain of what you've probably heard in golf instruction. But I want you to think about getting your weight forward. So we're talking about putting some more weight on the front leg. Setting the weight directly impacts your contact point with the ball. So think about it this way. Wherever I place my weight, my contact point is going to go. So weight forward, contact point forward on the ground. You see the club is coming into the ground in front of that golf ball right there. There's a beautiful divot, crispier than KFC. But if I ever shifted my weight in the golf swing or I stay back, and I see a lot of golfers, a lot of you are hanging back. If you're falling back and staying back here, you're almost always going to hit behind the ball. And a lot of times you run into the scooping and the flipping and the slicing, that chucking your clubs into the pond feeling. We don't like that. So we're going to set more weight on the front side towards the target. Automatically doing this in your golf swing will improve the ball striking and you'll start dropping shots right away. So just check this out. I'm gonna set the weight forward and just make some swings with my shoulders. Weight forward here, let's go. Oh, that was saucy. I didn't even think much about that. And it just exploded off into the distance. I wonder if we can do that again. Let's just see. That was right in the middle too, that felt great. So I'm just gonna set it, whoop. Keep it there, don't do anything. Oh my goodness, look at that, did it again. And a lot of golfers, they'll say, I just wanna be more consistent. Well, the consistency problem is that you're shifting too much. You're either shifting or swaying around and you need to stay centered. So the first part about staying centered, weight forward. My students are blown away because I'll lock their weight forward like this. I'll say, hey, you can't go right. You can't go off the ball. You can't even move in this direction. So you have this wall set up. And you're like chained to this wall. I tell my students, you cannot rip off the wall. In fact, if you're chained to it, oh, I can't get off it. So you're stuck against this wall and you're gonna make a swing. Oh, there it is again. That is why we play golf. So then my students start getting really crispy contact with the ball just from that alone. You know some other things that happen? You're getting more power, it's feeling great, you wanna play more golf. You get more power because you can only rotate. And you know, a lot of people talk about, I can't rotate either. Well, you can't rotate because you're shifting. You can't rotate when you're flexed or you're shifting or swaying. You can rotate though if the weight's forward, staying against that wall. There's more hip turn, there's more shoulder turn. I don't have to go to the gym to get that. I don't have to lift 400 pounds or go see a psychiatrist or I mean, a therapist. I mean like a physical therapist, you know. I need some mental help right about now. <laughs> I'm sweating. You all know that it's like 95 degrees outside. So the next thing I'll tell them after they got this beautiful rotation and the weights forward, just keep the lead arm straight. And when you do this, contact is guaranteed. So look at this. The lead arm stays straight, the weights forward. There's my contact point right there. I, I can't make this up. Like this is not a gimmick. It just sounds so easy but it's really, it really is that simple. Keep the arm straight. If the arm breaks down, oh man, it's gonna be a long day. Arm breaks down, I gotta straighten it somewhere. Oh, now I'm digging holes. So keeping the arm straight, keeping the weight forward allows for a consistent contact point. I'm just gonna demonstrate weight forward, arm straight right here. Just keeping one arm. And that's the beauty of it. How much effort? Zero. Contact point, maintain, same contact point. Works with every club in the bag. Now, of course, you don't take divots with your driver, but 
the idea is you have the same contact point with every club. There's the weight, set it, forget it. It's like you're a machine. And that's what you want in golf. In fact, that's what I'm teaching in my Segudo.golf online golf school. You're learning a step-by-step -step program to make yourself a ball striking machine. This is a big part of the program, learning to do this. Because without this, you can't do anything in golf. You gotta hit it solid first. So you can check it out in the link in the description below. Segudo.golf, life's just too short to play bad golf. So we got the arms straight, we got the weight for it. I'm just gonna set it. I'm exaggerating here because I want you to get the sensation. There's the ball and chain to the wall. And I'm gonna keep the lead arm straight. And there it is again. Look at that lovely divot pile. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was playing questionable golf, like if I was there and it's the top in it, ball's going all over the place, I wouldn't want to play a lot. But if I was doing that, I'd want to play every day. And you can do that. Two things, wall and then shoulders with the lead arm straight. There it goes again. You'd swear it's magic, but it's just the beauty of physics and geometry. Wow. Hey, what do you guys think about that? You think it's pretty good? Yeah. My film crews, they can talk. I mean, they're, they're not quite mute, but we're warming them up. <laughs> they're, they're like, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, I was thinking of a breaking them in. I was like, going to get um, one of my guys out here to just try this out. You know what, Colton, get over here. Colton doesn't play golf. He has never played, he's played one round of golf. I've ever seen him play one round of golf. He dressed, he looked the part. He was in, in golf knickers and the full old school hat. He looked cool, but he never really swung a club. So I'm gonna start him out with this. We'll get him a club. Your hands a little sweaty. Okay, we'll see what we can do. I want you to set up to this golf ball. Just pretend like you're going to hit it. All right, I'm going to put, I'm going to set him into the wall and I'm going to keep his arm straight. But before we hit the ball, we got to do a couple things. So the ball, I just tricked you. I said we were going to hit a ball. We're not. <laughs> we're not yet. So go ahead and imagine the ball is there. Two things. We're going to set the wall. So wait forward. And then I'm going to get his lead arm straight. So it's set up a little bit more straight arms here elbows together. All right. Now the first thing, since he's a beginner, we're just going to build contact. What we need to do, you're going to keep this side with the weight on it. You're going to keep this arm straight. I'm just going to just demonstrate here. Keep that arm straight. Keep it there. And there's a contact point. It'll finish right about here. You see how the club's going to come into the ground at that spot. I was a little behind it. So weight staying forward. I'm going to tuck this arm a little bit in. There we go. Does it feel comfortable? Yep. It probably feels so weird. <laughs> we give him the sensation of what it's like to have one contact point right there. And so go ahead and do that without me helping you. Just keep this, this arm straight, the weight there, and then we're gonna tuck that arm in a little bit. Don't do anything else. Good, good. All right, let's do another one. Now your goal is to try and get the club to bottom out a spot right there. Focus in on that spot. Better. When you finish, have that club pointed a little bit more down, both arm elbows together right there. So he's working on arms straight. Never done this before. There it is. Good contact point. Do it again. Better. We're see we're almost tight touching the ground with it now, right? <laughs> he wasn't expecting this today. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. All right. Let's do that one more time. I bet you can do that again. Almost. One more. Give me some elbows together right out here. Throwing, it, throwing that club down, elbows together. Bingo. Now he's got me all dirty. I got to put my clothes in the laundry. So, the moment of truth. I got him thinking there's so much pressure. There's like thousands of people watching this very moment. Just make this really difficult for you, right? <laughs> it make it easy. All right, so you're just gonna do the same thing you did with those practice swings, and let and just 
same short swing where it's not doing anything too big yet. So, so setting the wall, a little bit more weight on the front, right there. That's it, that's it. Just same thing. Don't think about the ball, just same swing. Did you see that? I've never done that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you see that right there? It's like he's holding up a fish he just caught. You see this right on the center of the face. Never played golf, zero experience. Hits it right on the middle. And that's what, that's the best feeling golf. How did that feel? Felt pretty good, yeah. Would you want to do that again? I would. Yeah, you would. I mean, we all, that's why we Life's play. too short. It is too short to play, play bad, bad golf. golf. <laughs> so he hit about four grooves up, two or three grooves right there. Nice collection of the ball in the center of the face. It can happen for you, it can happen for anybody just doing these two things. Dude, that was awesome. So he just hit the ball first and took a divot, doesn't play golf. You'd swear it's magic, but it's not. This is a guy with zero golf experience. So what does that tell you? It tells you that if we do the right things, like wait for an arm straight, it will happen, Segudo golfers. It happens for anyone, it can happen for you just by doing these things. So thanks for tuning in today. Colton, you were an awesome student. I put him on the spot. So everybody give him a round of applause in the comments section right there. Just, I'll, you'll be checking the comments later, I'm sure. Maybe I'll play some golf now. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all enjoy your week and I'll be seeing you in a future episode. Awesome. Well man. done. <laughs> I didn't expect that was gonna happen. I didn't expect to hit the ball. I was like, awesome. I was like, I'm about to do this. I'm gonna be like, you gotta keep it in. This extremely simple move that any golfer can do will completely transform your ball striking. And this key transformed my ball striking for the better, actually changed my golfing life. You see, I was on the verge of quitting, and then I found this tip that got me playing the best golf of my life immediately. I used to think with my old swing that I needed to swing the hands and arms as straight back and as up as possible to have a powerful, consistent golf swing. Then I was told that I need to drop the club in the slot and release my hands to hit the ball. And I've got all these things I'm trying to control in a span of three seconds. So what does that mean? That means you're hitting right, left, woods, lake, chucking the clubs simultaneously into the lake because it was so frustrating. And it all changed when I had a lesson where instead of swinging out and up, by the way, I was, I was about ready to quit, out and up like this, I had to swing the hands more in. And it turned out that swinging the hands more in was something the best ball strikers of all time are doing. The golfers on TV swing the hands in because they have to hit the ball effortlessly powerful and consistent. And so I, would, I got away from the habit of trying to drag this club as straight back as possible forever and lifting my arms high and instead get the club traveling more in this way. So if you can get from this mindset of high arms to lower arms, you're going to hit the ball much more solid. And this takes almost no effort to get here. You don't need super flexibility to get there. We think of a golf swing like Ben Hogan, super consistent, not a really huge backswing. He just puts the hands in, he goes right back to the ball, and the ball explodes off the club face. Life is good. So I want you to think about this. This is the transformative moment for you. The golf swing is a circle. We're tilted over, so the golf swing's an arc, like this. So the hands have to travel on this arc. They can't move off the arc. I mean, you could, but then you've got to find it again. So if you want your swing to be natural on this arc, powerful, consistent, we have to swing the hands in. So when you stand over the golf ball with your little tilt towards the ball here, you got your arms hanging down, just simply move the shoulders, rock the shoulders back and through, back and through. So I'm not forcing the club out, not forcing it in. It's just a natural path that sets here at address. My tilt sets the arc. There's no hands, just all shoulder rocking. The arms are following. Now stop at the top of your backswing. Look where your hands are. They're in. That's the arc. Grab your best friend, the golf club. Just do the same thing. You've got this set up here, the arms are hanging. Use that to your advantage, just swing. Hands are in behind the shoulder. Then swing through. 
look, the hand's finished over here. So this completely revolutionizes your golf swing. It gets you out of this inconsistent, oh man, I've got to think about takeaway, top of backswing, downswing, through impact. I've got to do all these things I've got to think about in three seconds. No, no, no. This is one thing. One thing. So you set up to the ball and we create that same feeling. Now, a lot of golfers tell me, Tom, it feels super low in the backswing. That's okay. You're probably coming from super high. So it's got to feel like it's down here if you want to be here. That's just how feel works. And if it feels weird, give it time. You're making a change. Making a change feels weird. By the way, I've got a free mini course. The top three keys, you need to be a great ball striker. Go.segudo.golf. Check it out in the comments and description below. So we make a swing from this nice new setup. Rocking those arms back and forth. Rocking those shoulders back and forth. And then I swing the club. And then I mash the ball. And then I smile because that was fun. And then we do it again because that was fun. You would play more golf if you hit the ball like that shot after shot. This is what will change your ball striking. Same thing, practice. Always practice, get a good rehearsal in for me. Don't skip on the rehearsals. If you're a musician, you know rehearsing is critical. Mm. Absolute KFC mash. That feels effortless. I'm not even working hard. That's the first thing I noticed when I did this. I was like, my jaw was dropped open for, I felt like 10 minutes because I had just gone from woods, lake, woods, lake, chalking the clubs into hitting the same shot every time. And it was with this, it was a six iron. It was just going 185 yards, just effortless. Boom, boom, boom. I felt like I found magic. Because golf shouldn't be that easy. That's the first thought I had. I was like, no, no. This is just a joke. One good one. But then you hit five. The same spot. Then you hit ten. The same spot. And then you go out and you play. And you say, the ball's landing in the same spot. I'm hitting the same shot. It's not magic. It just works when you do it. It works when you do these things. They're designed to work. Mm. So I bet you're wondering, hey, do we do this with the driver? Because I want to hit my driver really good. Yes, let's get the driver. By the way, you need a license to drive and your license gets accepted today when you start taking the hands in instead of straight backing up. So it's the same thing with the driver. We're just a little further away from the ball. It's a longer club. Nothing changes. You still might feel like the club's low. That's okay. But we're going to do the same thing. Just rehearse it. There's my swing. That's the path. Set up. Oh, come on. That's one right there. That happens. Longest drive of the year. Set up. Got that path figured out. Smash the ball. Smile. Re-tee. Because that was fun. That sound never gets old. This is why we play golf. We play golf to hit fun shots. We don't play golf to be miserable in the desert for 40 years. No. So I've got my path. My tee says, please don't hit me again. I'm in a lot of pain. All right, there's my path back through. Swing. Good shot. It really feels like I'm not working hard at all. I'm hardly working. Simple key. Set up again. Path back and through. Oof, that feels great. That feels great. 
When you go watch TV and you watch golf on TV, or you go to YouTube and might look up some swings, start looking for the hands in. Hands in is defined as anything that is inside of the target line. So if this is the target line, the line the ball is on, if my hands are in of that, then the hands are in. Straight back would look something like this. Straight back and up, you look like a Ferris wheel. We can't swing the club on that. It's impossible. You really gotta force your body in unnatural positions to get there. What's natural and what's most consistent and most powerful is to just trace on this arc. Look, the hands are in. I could be in here. I'm still in at here. There's varying degrees of in in the backswing, but they're all in. So if you can start focusing on getting your swing to be more in instead of up, you're going to strike the ball better and perhaps it will transform your ball striking like it transformed mine. So thanks for tuning in today, Segudo Golfers. And if you're looking for a way to play your best golf right now, check out my website, segudo.golf. It's a complete golf swing training program designed to help you play the best golf of your life. Life is far too short to play bad golf. So get on the gravy train to great ball striking with Segudo.golf. See you in a future episode. Hey there, Segudo Golfers. Today I've got something for you that's going to change how you think about the golf swing and it will quickly improve the quality of your ball striking. What I'm talking about is the concept of swinging the handle and not the club head. Most amateur golfers, meaning most of you in the audience, you swing the club head. With, maybe you're not thinking about it, but you're swinging the club head and not the handle. And all the pros swing the handle. Let's think about the golf swing for a second in terms of a hammer. So get yourself a hammer. Here is a lovely sledgehammer. When I take a sledgehammer into a nail, the only part of the hammer that makes contact with the nail, or the only part that should, is the head of the hammer. If my hands make contact with the nail, ooh, that's gonna hurt, it's gonna leave a mark. I don't want that. Very painful and it probably won't even send the nail into the wall. So in the golf swing, we have a similar thing going on here. We've got the club head, we've got the handle. We grip the handle, we hit with the club head. But you need to think about the way you use a hammer. When I use a hammer, I'm not thinking about hitting the nail with my hands. I always think about hitting the nail with the hammer. And most of the time, you're not even thinking when you're doing this. You take a hammer into a nail, boop, there it is. You just hit it. But for some reason, we get this golf club in our hands and then our brains go haywire and we start thinking too much about what to do with this thing. We've been doing this for far longer than we've been doing this. And yet we seem to struggle with this more than we struggle with this. This is, that we don't even struggle with this. You could probably just go hit a hit hammer into a nail, no problem. So when you grip your golf club, keep the same focus. This is the handle, this is the hammer head. 
Why does this matter? Well, what happens when you swing with the club head? You get all the ugly things you're doing right now. Golfers that swing with the club head try to hit the ball, meaning when I say swing with the club head, I mean your feel is here, not here. You need to feel the handle, not the head. When you try and use the head, it's kind of like putting your hands out here and swinging down to hit the ball like this. But with a hammer, you do the opposite. You've got the handle, and you're bringing the handle to the ball, like this. There's a big difference in those two paths. Did you see that? If you didn't see that, let's, let's rewind it. If I put my hands at the head, and I try and hit the ball with, from the top of my backswing, that's the motion I will make. But if I put my hands on the handle, the club head follows the handle, and you start to see the path that the pros make in the downswing. If you want a solid golf swing, the club head needs to approach through the middle lower part of your back here at this point. If you're over here in the zone of death, you can kiss it goodbye. It's slicing off the planet. The club's going straight down to the ground. You're chopping wood. Putting my focus in the club head leads to me trying to hit from the top hit from the top of my golf swing. If you're hitting from the top, you're trying to hit the golf ball from here. Ooh, steep, boom, chop. So you put your focus on the handle like you would with a hammer. The club head follows the hands. Look at that. The club head is following the hands. The hammer head is following, lagging behind the hands. If I had a nail in the ground here, and I had to drive it in the ground towards the target, I would swing the hammer like this. I would never once say, oh gee, I might as well hit from the top. It wouldn't make any sense to do that, because I've got to drive the nail this way into the target. So I have to have the hands leading the hammerhead in order for the hammerhead to hit the nail. So the hands, the handle, is what I am swinging, the head is following. If you've been thinking about the golf swing as putting your hands where the club is and swing over the top, this will get you swinging into out, shallower path, and you'll be ripping the ball so much better. If we look at the difference in impact positions too, you'll see that if you hit from the top, the club goes steeper and over, and then you're reaction is to shorten up your arms, flip, and fall back. Because as the club goes down, you have to shorten up your arms to hit the golf ball, or else the club will go straight into the ground. So over means I gotta pull in with the arms, and then when I pull in with the arms, I can't keep my weight forward, I've gotta pull the weight back in order to make contact with the ball. It's a, it's a dang miracle you make contact when you do that. But, if the hands, if I swing the handle, the handle leads, I have the club head following, 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 following into here, and that impact, I have a totally different impact position. Because the hands are leading, the club is following, that's my natural impact position. This is your natural impact position with a hammer and a nail as well. The hands are leading, the club head follows. The hands are leading, the club head follows. I want you to go to bed tonight saying that to yourself. The hands, the handle is in charge. The club head is submissive to the handle. The club head follows the handle. Then we start hitting golf shots with this mentality and it will change the way you hit the golf ball in a so, so much better way. If I start thinking handle, I am not going to try and hit this way. I want the handle leading. So we have to get the handle ahead of the club head. Here's how you feel this correctly. Go ahead and grip the golf club. Not like your normal golf grip, but grip it like you have a hammer. So how do I grip this hammer? I'm gripping it kind of like a baseball bat. 10 finger grip without the thumbs. You can put the thumbs down the middle like this if that helps. But really just trying to give you the idea that it's a hammer and not a golf club for right now. So we've got this hammer right here. 
with my thumbs down the shaft simulating a golf grip. And if I want this hammer to go into the nail, this is what I want you to feel. Taking your grip, go ahead and point the club back towards the camera. Or it would be opposite end of your target. Okay, so I've preset this. What I want you to do from here is take the hands and move them toward the target. When you do that, the club head is following. You're getting the sensation of the club head following and the club head, instead of the club head going over. The club head is behind, behind you. And this is just a short example, a really, really slow, like not a big swing example. If you were to take this feeling to the full swing, grip it like a sledgehammer, go to the top of your backswing, and from here, hands lead, but the hands must go down this way. Hands go down. The, the hands lead, club stays behind. The club never goes over. Never over, always behind. You should be seeing it over here. I can't stress this enough because I see this problem on the lesson T all the time. And you're probably dealing with this, or you've seen many people who do, who have this problem. Pay attention to the club head. Is it behind me or is it out in front of me? I never want it here. I always want it here. Then we're going to hit a chip shot. Why we're hitting a chip shot? Because we need to start small. If you've never felt, if you've never felt the club head lagging behind, this is a good place to start. So, taking the club back to about takeaway position, you now have the hands ahead of the club head. From here, have the hands lead through impact. So it's a, it's a short chip shot, just preset this, hands going to the target, club head behind me. Hands going to the target, club head behind me. Let's do it again. Put the club here, the club head is behind, hands going targetward. The hands are simply just going this way, as if they're on a line. The club head will follow, you have to trust it. Okay, club head behind. Now, we're going to do a really cool drill to help you get this even more. So this drill is one of my favorites for feeling the club head lagging instead of going over and understanding how the handle should work. We're leading with the handle, the club head stays behind you for powerful, consistent golf shots. So, imagine that your arms are spaghetti noodles and they're really nicely cooked. They're so noodly and loosey-goosey, yeah. And you got these spaghetti noodles. So when I have spaghetti noodles on the golf club, it's almost like I can feel the weight of the club. There's no tension, whatever, in my arms whatsoever. No tension, as if the club head moves the arms. Well, if I kept this loosey-goosiness and I was making these little short chip swings, what lags behind the hands when you do this? The club head. Because the arms are so light in tension that the club head, the weight of the club head has to stay behind them in the downswing. So I was really loosey-goosey here. I have no choice but to have the club head lagging and the hands staying ahead. So we take this into a half shot, a little bit further. You can really see I'm, I'm loosey-goosey here. So you can feel the club head behind you. Maybe a half shot, three quarters. That's where you want to go with this is three quarters. You want to feel the club head behind you. So I'm really lagging the club back. It's almost like you want to drag the club off of the ball to where the hands lead going back. This is an extreme situation. The hands lead going back, the club head follows. The hands lead going down, the club head follows. That's how you really feel the club head staying behind for solid contact. If you're somebody who is over the top, you will have never felt this before. If you've been steep your whole life, you've been feeling over, over, over. You've been feeling club head first, club head first, instead of 
handle first, handle first, club head behind. And then we hit some shots, really loosey goosey. I'm not caring about the result. This ball could, could go in a couple different directions. That's not the point. The point is that you feel the club head behind. I know when I do that, the club head's staying over here. I can actually feel that happening because of the weight. Dragging the handle back first, dragging the handle through, handle back, handle through, handle back, handle through. There's many different ways I can explain this to you, but it's the most intuitive way that we learn how to hit a hammer into a nail, except we apply it to a golf club. And it makes perfect sense because the golf club is just a hammer. That's all it is. I mean, we call it a golf club, but it's just a hammer device for hitting a golf ball. Lag it back, handle leads, handle leads. The handle must always lead for compressed golf shots. How are you feeling right now about this? Does it make you feel kind of weird? If you're saying it makes you feel weird, good. Because that tells you you made a change from probably swinging the head over. Ooh, that would, you see that? That could have been bad. Ooh, about, about three inches from destruction. Okay, so another reason not to swing the club head, another reason to swing the handle. Loosey goosey, handle, la handle leading, club head lagging. Handle leading, club head lagging. Leading, Ooh, that was nice and crispy. This is a golf lesson I wish I learned when I was starting out because I wanted to always hit from the top. And then when I was looking at a hammer one day, I'm thinking, geez, we just should swing the handle like we swing a hammer. The club head's always behind me. So here we go, loosey goosey. Handle leads, handle leads. Handle ahead of the golf club, handle ahead of the golf club. You see that change of direction? The handle is always ahead for this drill. And you want the handle ahead in the downswing anyway. That's the proper path. Let me take it up to about a three quarter swing. We'll kick it up a notch. Handle, handle. Really loosey goosey spaghetti arms. Club head lags behind the body. Now, when we have to take this up to the full swing, you just need to keep in mind, we're gonna take away the loosey-goosey arms. Unless you're a really bad slicer and you want to fix that for right now. But if we're getting into regular swing dynamics, regular, regular feels, not, not going all spaghetti-like, not doing all this, though it might help you to feel that, we just need to keep in mind, where's the club head? So when I'm swinging, Normal, club head's behind me, club head needs to stay behind me. If it doesn't, I won't hit it solid. So anything you do in golf when it comes to swinging this club, you must be handle oriented to hit it well. Handle is going to lead on the way down. That was nice and solid. The handle always leads, the club always follows for a really powerful golf swing. So Segudo golfers, if you're looking to play your best golf right now, check out my website, segudo.golf, for 10 bucks a month. You can be playing the best golf of your life. You know this, life is far too short to play bad golf. If you got there, remember to swing the handle, not the club head. Club head, handle, two very different forces at work. You want that handle in there. Click here to join my online golf school for 10 bucks a month. Click here to subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. Here are two selections from the Segudo Golf Archives designed to help you play some awesome golf. Thanks again for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in a future episode. I was at a tough part of my golfing life, shooting 100, struggling to break 90, and then I changed my takeaway and it dropped 20 shots off my golf game. What we're looking at is this really small part of the swing right here, the first few feet off the ball. That's called the takeaway. It's where the club's parallel with the ground. My takeaway can determine how I get to the top of the backswing, how I start my downswing, how I get to impact. Your takeaway is almost like the lifeline of the golf swing. 
So how you start can determine how you finish. My takeaway used a lot of hands back in the day, a lot of hands and arms. And that would cause the club face to rotate, would cause the club to go off path. And sometimes I didn't even know where the club was. So you can imagine why the ball was going all over the place. Sometimes I'd even hit the hosel too and I didn't like that feeling. Nobody wants that. What changed it all for me was taking out the hands in the first part of the golf swing and replacing it with more of a body move. And since I was such a roller, it felt crazy. I wanted the club to go back on a path like this. I wanted the club more out in front of the hands or in line with the hands. And I was tired of the club getting behind me so early. Another thing that happened was I would take my arms and I would try and rush my swing back off the ball. So my swing was more arms and hands, but not using the body. When I switched to using more of a body motion, the club would take the same path every time. And if you're taking the same path here, you got a better chance of getting the same path throughout the rest of the golf swing. So how did I start using my body? Well, I had to tell my hands, shh, be quiet. Another thing I had to do was make sure my right arm and elbow was higher than my left. See, when I took the club back with my hands and arms, a lot of times my left elbow would get higher than my right or even with it. And then from there, it was game over. It wasn't gonna work. So when I focused on getting the right elbow higher than the left, all of a sudden I felt the body engage. I wasn't feeling anything with my hands. So the club face down here was staying nice and square. It wasn't changing angles. And when I figured that out, I got the face square and I was using more of this body feeling the ball was going straighter because I didn't have to control my club face so much in the swing. If your swing is a lot of hands, you have to control the face a lot more. But when you take the hands out of it, the ball goes straighter. So here's a quick example of my old swing. Looks something like that. I don't want to go back to that. But a lot of hand action in the first part. And the ball started curving away from me as you saw. But when I started doing right arm higher than left, I could hit it straight predictably straight. And the impact was a lot more compressed, meaning it just felt buttery on the face. It felt weird to me at first because the club was more out in front of me. The hand, this was, this wanted to be down here. So I was feeling like so much higher. But you can hear the strike with that. And the impact position, the hands are ahead where you want them, the weight's forward. And you're feeling the ball in the center of the face. I was no longer hitting the toe or the heel of the club because of all of this extra stuff I used to do in the first part, rolling it, taking it too straight back, trying to figure out where to put the club. I said, hmm, if I just put the arm up here higher, I don't have to think about all that. And then it's straight again. Then I would take it up to a fuller swing. So going here and then figuring out how do I get to the top? So a lot less work. It was like, I'm here. I'm at the top. What do I do with my hands? Nothing, nothing. Because I didn't do anything with my hands here. I kept the club face square. I can just keep swinging back with my body and I'm square at the top. It means it's going to go straight because I'll get it squared impact without having to do anything with the hands. This brings me to why I see a lot of golfers struggle. It's because they're doing too much with the hands. A lot of times they're trying to control the club face mid swing, manipulating the hands, manipulating the face, manipulating maybe the arms trying to control every little piece. But then when you realize that you don't need to control every piece, you just need to control the right pieces. That's when the golf swing gets really consistent and much easier for you. That's when you start seeing shots drop big time. So we'll start taking this right elbow concept up a little higher. I felt like I'd do it about halfway back. Now you don't want to go past this point, keeping the right arm higher because you'll end up getting more of this chicken wing across the line feel but it's a great takeaway feeling. So we're talking three feet here, then you can do the rest of your swing. You just have to do three feet. That's what I'm talking about. And it's the laser straight. I'm so much more confident in my swing now than I was then. And we're talking back when I was in high school and stuff. So much more confident now because I knew that if I had it square here, it was coming right back to square. I felt like it was on autopilot. I felt like I had so much control that I could step up to the tee and almost know where the ball is going to go. And that's a feeling you'll never forget when you start learning how to do that. Another straight one, almost hit the bird out there. 
I don't really think about too much else. I'm trying to keep that arm higher. If it ever changed on me, and I would take video of my swing, you should video your swing. If it ever got level, I was in trouble. That's when I saw some weird things happen in my swing. My body stopped working. So the next part I want you to do with this, we're continuing on getting you to drop about 20 shots because it can happen. Thinking the body gets pulled around versus hands and arms. So once you start the right arm being higher, you should feel the hips start to turn, but most importantly, the left shoulder going down. That's so key right there versus that. Hand rotation, no relationship to the ball. I got a relationship to the ball here, shoulder down. There's the ground. I can strike the ground. You know, that's the feeling we all want. Hit the guy. I bet he didn't know that was part of the video. <laughs> He's gonna say, hey, you kids playing golf again. Get off my lawn. You know, you'd swear this was part of the video. It was all choreographed, but it's not. There it is again, straight. Loving how consistent this is. There it is again. There it is again. Why? Because we set it automatic in the first part of the golf swing. And then I feel the body get pulled around. I feel the left shoulder going down. That's when you start seeing shot after shot after shot is nice and crispy. Pulling that shoulder down. There's my backswing. Keeping the hands so quiet, right arm above the left. You're going to love it. That's what's going on in my Segudo.golf online golf school. Students are coming in, building their swing step by step, to hit crispy shots like that time and time again. It's so much fun. So good golfers, thanks for tuning in today. Keep that right arm above the left, and you're going to see some delicious strikes with the golf ball. I look forward to seeing you in a future episode. Have an awesome week. One of my students just had an incredible golf swing transformation. He was a low mid 90s player, and after doing this really simple tip, he shot a 78 the first time out. And it's gonna have the same effect on your ball striking too. As humans, we make the golf swing really complicated and the golf swing makes us psychotic. But what if you had a really simple way to make sure your golf swing was firing day in, day out for great ball striking? That's what we're doing here today. And it's all about the shoulders. If you can keep this in your mind during the golf swing, it will change your ball striking for the rest of your life, for the better. So this student in particular had very inconsistent ball striking. Left, right, up, down. It felt like the ball was going backwards half the time, maybe between the legs. And what it came down to was the shoulders. So the shoulders are one of the most important pieces of your golf swing. And one of the keys to mastering shoulder movement is to make sure your shoulders are moving freely in the golf swing. What do I mean by freely? I mean that the shoulders are not slowing down or stopping due to some other swing problem. So when we hold our arms out in front of us like this, and we clasp our hands together, you can feel, as you swing back and through, the free, uninhibited movement of the shoulders. And doesn't that feel great? That's where you're gonna get most of your speed, when these shoulders are allowed to do that. Just oil up these hinges here in your shoulders, and you'll get plenty of speed. But when we get a club in our hands, and I bet this happens with you, when you have the ball going all over the place, or the ball's just not coming off the face really solid, you don't get that same freeing feeling in your shoulders. In fact, you probably feel something different. You might feel with a club, well, I'm not getting through the ball. A lot of golfers will say that. Or they'll say, dang, I just, it's like my shoulders are stopping. It's that feeling of slowing down through the ball. You're not getting all the speed. Sometimes you're finishing and your arms are pulling in close to your body, your weight's going back. So these are all feelings, these are all tells for us that remind us that the shoulders are actually stopping and we need to keep the shoulders going through. So how do we fix this problem? Well, this is going to fix your golf swing. You just need to get your swing in position to have the shoulders move through the ball easily and effortlessly. And it's gonna vary from player to player. You and somebody else might have different feels for this, but if you can do this, you're gonna play great golf. We just felt free movement of the shoulders. Now bend forward over the ball with your clasped hands and make a swing back and through. Once again, nothing should be slowing down the movement of the shoulders. What happens when I swing over the top or chop down at the golf ball? You'll know what it's like for the, sho the shoulders to stop then because as the club's going down, ugh, 
this shoulder stops and it's like I freeze up at impact. No bueno. So we've got this feeling of back swing, down swing, the shoulders moving freely through the hitting area, the entire golf swing. Even from this tilted angle, you should be feeling the same amount of freedom. With a golf club in our hands, we need to feel the same level of freedom. So as I swing back, the first thing you should do is make sure your elbows are together, your arms are straight. So we have our shoulders connected to the arms and the hands and then the club. That's that clasped hands feeling. And when I do this right now, I'm seeing the club move through the zone, but most importantly, feeling the shoulders, they're never slowing down. So starting small here, back and through, we just start here so you get the feeling of free movement of the shoulders. Just a short little chip pitch shot. My shoulders are moving the club, and I'm not feeling them slow down. The only time you feel them slow down is if you chop down into the ground like this with the club. You're losing power and consistency that way. So I didn't feel anything slow me down there. It's a 100 yard seven iron chip shot. Pretty powerful, right? That's because my shoulders got through the zone. If I was doing this even at a chip level and my shoulders stopped, you'd see a great difference in these numbers. My shoulders stopped right there. And because the shoulders stopped, the club wasn't allowed to go through. And even in your full swing, the same thing will happen. My club head speed changed a lot there. My distance obviously changed between the last two shots. My club head speed was 72, 73 miles an hour on the first chip pitch shot where the shoulders went through. And then here on the one where my right shoulder stopped, I consciously stopped it. My club head speed was almost half of that or about 60% less. So we're talking 30 miles an hour club head speed there. When we get up into the full swing levels, you having free shoulders versus stopping is going to make your club head speed difference be even larger. We're talking about that 220 yard drive versus that 250 yard drive type stuff. The stuff that'll make you really happy. So once you get this feeling of the club head moving through the zone aggressively in this pitch shot, free moving shoulders, I'm not slowing this down. I'm being pretty aggressive here. I want the club to go through. I feel the shoulders. It's a pretty powerful strike. Once again, 76 miles an hour, I actually went a little bit more at it and I carried it 135. Beautiful. That's effortless power. I'm not working hard to get the ball going that far. We then start building up more of your swing. So we would take the shoulders farther back and then you've got the challenge of swinging through, feeling the shoulders stay on their free moving path. This is where a lot of golfers will change their game is after that chip pitch level, as we take the club further back, how do I keep the shoulders moving through? Well, the first thing you gotta do is make sure your path is good. Your path's probably gonna change with this. So the club path, if at any point it goes steep, shoulders are gonna stop. If it's going down, shoulders are gonna stop. Your game is going down. Things aren't good, DEF CON 1. But if we have a shallower club in the downswing, look at this, the shoulders just go whoosh, right through. It's breezy, it's easy, it's fun, it's flying off the face. So as you swing, you're gonna learn a lot about yourself. You're gonna learn a lot about the shoulders. I've gotta find a way to make sure the shoulders keep going through. So when we look at the downswing, it all comes back to, is the club shallow enough? Is the path good? So I could have a great backswing here, and if I shallow downswing, the shoulders will move through like nothing. It's like air. I've just gotta figure out how they get through. All right. 185, not too bad. For a seven iron, I'm pretty happy about that. I felt my shoulders get through, but if they slow down, things aren't good. I'm gonna do another one where I really get them through even more. I think I can do better than that. Well, that felt good. Yeah. Oh yeah. So on my downswing, I'm very conscious that the club does not go steep first, actually keep it shallow to allow the shoulders to go through. Swiveling. By the way, learning these techniques is something that I teach in my Segudo.golf online golf school. But I've got a free mini course, the top three keys, you need to be a great ball striker, 
go.segura.golf. Check it out in the comments and description below. You will get yourself on the path of learning how to get these shoulders to do that free flowing motion. Okay, on this one, I'm going to do what I see a lot of amateurs doing, the shoulders stopping. My right shoulder is gonna stop firing, the club's gonna get steeper. We'll see a difference in club head speed on this one, I'm sure of it. Actually, I had to stop it, really slow it down. That's 77 miles an hour with a full swing. Now, I'm gonna go steep on this one. I'm gonna try and drive the club down and chopping. This will really stop that shoulder. So I can't feel my shoulders going through. I actually have to force it through. It feels like it's rough. 92 miles an hour somehow, but a terrible shot due to that steeper downswing. So I could really uh, grunt at the ball and hit steep, but the ball's not going to go anywhere because the shoulders aren't moving through correctly. They should feel like air, like nothing, effortless through the zone. Let's do another steep one. So I'm feeling that shoulder stopping. Carries are not going anywhere near where they should because I'm hitting too much down with my club. Let's get those shoulders going through now. Let's have some fun. Mm. Oh, does it get any better? Yeah. You just feel the freedom. I feel free. You know where I've seen this get really powerful too is with the D driver. We want the shoulders to keep moving. This is every club in the bag. I don't want to feel them stopping, so I've got to do a little practice here, feel them. All right, there's my swing. I can really get through the zone nicely there. Then we apply that same freedom to the ball, that free shoulder feeling. Woo! That was a rocket. Perhaps slightly low on the face. Let's free up the shoulders again. Nice. 290 carry, we'll take that all day. Freedom of the shoulders is serious cash flow for your golf game. You hear that? <laughs> it's like a bazooka. <laughs> it's just going to the woods. Wow! You should be at your computer, or your living room, wherever you're watching this, out on the range, you should be feeling the freedom. If you don't have the freedom, then you're gonna be slowing down, the club's not working, life isn't good. Golf is life. And golf is most fun when we are hitting the ball like that. So what I want you to do, when you focus on your game, is free up those shoulders. It transformed my student. 92 to 78 is a life change. He's playing the best golf of his life right now. So you can do that. I've also got that online golf school, Segudo.golf, that will help you do that. You can check out in the link in comments below. Life is too short to play bad golf. So start playing the best golf of your life with Segudo.golf. Thanks for tuning in today, Segudo golfers. And I look forward to seeing you in a future episode. Have an awesome week. One of the easiest ways for you to get better at golf right now, and it's so simple, is to think about your shoulder. I've used this tip with countless students, and they see an immediate improvement in their ball striking. The feeling of great ball striking will happen when you focus on getting your front shoulder pointing down at the ball. And the sound is incredible. That is like Van Halen's eruption. That's why we play golf. And a lot of golfers are missing this gold mine in the golf swing because you've always been told to turn. Everybody's focusing on getting a big turn in the golf swing. And what's missing is the importance of tilting. So when I talk about tilting, I mean when you're standing over the ball, 
you've got to keep your body's relationship. So I've got a relationship to the ball at setup, and everybody looks like getting a good, a good posture here, right? You got this tilt towards the ground. We need to maintain that tilt. If at any point I lose my tilt, so I start standing up in the golf swing, and I hear this all the time, I'm standing up. How do I stop standing up? The way you stop standing up is you focus on creating tilt. And so the best swing thought for you, and you should just do this one when you go play golf, it, you don't even have to practice it for maybe a couple minutes a day, is to think about getting your front shoulder pointing at the ball. Arnold Palmer talked about doing this one. This one helped him. It was one of his favorite swing thoughts. So what happens when I think about pointing my shoulder at the ball? Well, the shoulder, pointing it down at the ball, shoulder gets down. There's my tilt. That relationship to the ground is going to enable me to always strike the ground at a spot in front of the ball. And what happens when I don't get that shoulder down, standing up, or if this shoulder even levels a little bit, I'm gonna hit a bad shot. I don't, I'm sorry, club, I don't wanna do this. Oh my goodness, I lost my relationship to the ball. I'm sorry, never happened again. But when I get that shoulder down, I will find the ground. And it's, it's the best poem in golf. Shoulder down to find the ground. Left shoulder at the ball. I'm gonna point the front shoulder down. Down, down, down. There it is. Just keep going down with it. Get down on it. It's really amazing. So many swing thoughts in people's minds nowadays. If they just thought about pointing the shoulder at the ball, you'd be a happy golfer. If you just tried to do this. Shoulder down, 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 down. There it is again, smoking, Whoosh. and there's sizzle on it too. I want a side of, I want bacon, eggs, and a side of two pancakes with that. If they ask you, do you want fries with that golf shot? You say yes, and I want a side of front shoulder going down. Not thinking too much. So when you go out and play your round, I just want you to think it, just eliminate every swing thought. Instead of all these thought bubbles all around you, surrounding you, all these swing demons attacking you throughout the day, you could eliminate all of them, exercise all of them just by getting your front shoulder down. I replace all those bubbles and then drop in the thought of front shoulder down. So, so I just keep going down, down, down. Like that blues song. We're going down, down. Is that even the lyrics? You know if that's the lyrics? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't care about the lyrics as much as I care about that golf shot. <laughs> you know, does this, does this work with the driver? I get this one a lot. Hey, that's great with the irons, Tom, but does it do anything with the woods and the driver? Well, let's just find out so we don't have to worry about it. Get the driver out, get the woods out. You know what? I shouldn't be hitting driver because this range is kind of short. Last thing I need is a lawsuit from hitting someone on the other side of the range. <laughs> so we'll just, we'll just pretend we have a driver. Three wood, still fun, it goes long, it's far, it's great. But what am I doing? Shoulder down. Now, when you stand over a three wood, when I do shoulder down, you'll see with a three wood, I'm here, I'm more level, but with a, with a nine iron or something, I'd be more like this, or wedge. So you see there's more tilt with a wedge versus a wood or a driver. So I naturally have less tilt, but I'm still gonna think the same thing, shoulder at the ball. It's, it's universal. It's a beautiful thing. Three wood off the deck, here we do. Left shoulder at the ball. Oh, that was flonged. Can we do it again? Probably. Why? Because if you keep a relationship to the ball, life is good. In fact, that's what's going on in my Segudo.golf online golf school. People learn how to do this with all the clubs in their bag. The best feeling in golf. Life is too short to play bad golf. So let's just send it. We should spend our time sending it. Oh, man. That was awesome. What else do you want with your life? So if you point your shoulder at the ball, you're going to hit more fairways. You're going to feel that sensation. You're gonna hit more greens. You know what that means? The scores will do this. Woo, they start nosediving. 
you'll go from shooting in the hundreds or the 90s, all of a sudden you, find, you wake up the next morning and you're in the 70s or the 80s. It's that powerful. So thanks for tuning in today, and I'll see you in a future episode. Breaking it in. There is one thing you can do right now to dramatically improve every aspect of your golf game. And this simple tweak right here is going to make you a much better ball striker. We're talking about getting connected today and why connection is so important. Connection is just simply this, getting your arms glued to your body. Now, some of the greatest ball strikers of all time, like Ben Hogan, for example, emphasize connection in the golf swing. Getting this connection in here because it helps you be a consistent golfer. Just look at what this does in the golf swing. So if I want to be consistent, I want to take the club back and through the same way every single time. So that means backswing and downswing pretty much on the same path. And if I can do that, I'm going to hit the ball so well, I'm going to love this game. That had a really nice sound to it. These irons, wow. So you're watching that swing right there as I take the club back. You can see that my lead arm is glued to my side and my pec there, and my trail arm is glued against my side here. And I'm trying to keep this glue throughout the entire golf swing to give me the same backswing every time. But there's also a beauty of getting this in the downswing, you're gonna love this part. If I keep the glue, I've got my Gorilla Glue right here, <laughs> stuck, now I can't move this arm. Great guys, now I can't film the rest of the day. You didn't warn me about that. If I start down, keeping the glue, watch this the club traces magically back on the same path to the ball. And this is what enables you to be ridiculously consistent as a ball striker. And you're gonna be hitting it so clean, keeping the glue. That sounded good. So how do we keep this glue throughout the golf swing without taking Gorilla Glue and just get you stuck and you be like this all day? Well, it's so simple and pros have been doing this for centuries. You just take a little bit of your shirt, I'm assuming you're wearing a shirt right now, we're gonna just take it and tuck it in against your armpit. And when I do this, I get a little tucked in, I wanna feel like I'm keeping that tucked in part of my shirt stuck against my body. Watch as I swing around my body here, keeping that glue. Boom, perfectly connected. Boom, perfectly connected. And another thing you should be feeling when you're doing this is that your body is starting to engage. So your swing is no longer this all arms. Your swing is not this float and fly away chicken wing thing. Ew. No, no, your swing is gonna look immediately pro. Get it glued. I feel the shirt stuck in there. I swing my shoulders. Body works the way it should. The back swing, body works the way it should. And the down swing. Now it doesn't get any easier than that. If it was any easier, I don't have an analogy for that. <laughs> I don't have an analogy for that. It just doesn't get any easier than that. So I just keep it glued, right? Get the shirt in there. That took me all, what, three seconds? Colton, will you say three seconds? Yeah, he's saying about three seconds, like two seconds. I got it glued in, and then I just keep the glue. The shirt stays in. And there it flies. And it looks awesome. The ball is just destroyed. And then we do it again because that's so much fun. Get the glue, tuck it in, I set the glue, I swing the shoulders. Torched. Can I get an amen from the people in the back? Ball's going so long. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. Tell me a better three second tip to improve your game. I, mean, I don't know of any because this gets the whole swing working. Let's just do it again. This one may have worked too well. I shouldn't be telling you guys. Keep the connection, send it. Hmm, that was a peach. The swing is just automatic when you get so think of your connection like being automatic. You're just setting a machine. So here's a little bonus tip for you. When you get connected, you got the glue in here. This glue doesn't change. The lead arm, you got this glued against your side. This doesn't change. One other thing you shouldn't change, your lead arm. If you want to strike a beautiful divot in front of the ball every single time, just keep this arm straight with the glue. And then you see the shoulders magically move the club around the body. 
on that same path back and through, enabling me to strike on the center of the club face every single time and enabling a nice crispy KFC divot right there time and time again. It's the best feeling in golf. You'd swear it's cheating. So all we do is get connected. What are you guys going to do? You're going get, to get connected. We'll glue the shirt in. I keep the shirt in. And then I swing. That feels really good. What do you guys think about the sound of that? Is that something else? Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know what else to say. Like, this is so simple. <laughs> My video team's probably thinking, Tom, you got a better script than this. This is about the worst script I've ever heard. There's no script. There's just pure ball striking. So this is what's going on. I got a free mini course that shows you how to do this step by step. There's a few other things you need to do. Check it out, go.segudo.golf. It'll help you learn the top three keys. You need to be a great ball striker. And there's tons of drills I just put in there to help you perfect hitting the ball and launching it to your target with that same sensation. Now here's another gold nugget to take with you in your ball striking. One of the big bonuses of keeping this glue in here, this Gorilla Glue against your side, is that it prevents you from flipping. You know this disease where you're swinging into impact, everything, dis everything disconnects and then you're just doing this and it's basically a top shot, a thin shot, it's a low roller and there's no power. It's the most unsatisfying shot in golf. Well, this connection forces you to get the club into this position right here, parallel to the ground, the trail arm is still tucked in and glued against my body. Look at that glue. That's outrageous. It's the same as it was at setup. I've got it so glued, and as I swing into impact, keep the shoulders moving, boom, there's the ground. Boom, there's the ground. Boom, there's, you see how the consistency of hitting the ground goes up a million percent versus if you're sitting here disconnecting and flipping, I have no idea where the club's coming to the ground. It might not even hit the ground. Chunk, duff, whiff, then just want to quick golf through your clubs in that pond. <sighs> no, unsatisfying. So keeping the glue, boom. Keeping the glue, boom. And you'd swear it's magic because it happens every single time we do this. Keep the shirt in. One last big bonus. How many bonuses? Everything's a bonus about this. It's, it's like three seconds and then I collect all the winnings from the lottery. Just fill out the form and we'll give you a billion dollars. That's really what it feels like. So I keep the tucked in arm, the downswing, it never goes over, never goes over the top. Ooh. Look, that's disconnect, disconnect, never gets wide. Keeping it in, stays tucked and the club stays shallow. It never goes over, it never goes down, it never goes flipping. You just gotta love it. So I'm gonna go in and collect my million dollars now if you don't mind. Let's collect. Cashing checks. Let's collect my second. We're gonna fill out the second form. Oh yes, I would like to fill out another form for a billion dollars worth of golf shots, please. Yes, keep it tucked. That's outrageous contact. You hear that sound, it's like whoosh, whoosh. Keeps the glue. Do, 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 do. He swings the shoulder. Oh, that's lovely. It is going to be a great day. So go out there. Be connected. And you are going to play the best golf of your life. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future episode. But you're going to have so much fun doing this, hitting good contact, that you could play great golf just doing this. Hey there, Segudo golfers. Today I'm addressing the age-old question of what should I really be working on in the golf swing? Are you working on the right things? Do you work on the backswing? Do you work on the downswing? Do you know what you're working on? Today I'm going to clarify and clear any confusion you might be having about what to work on your golf swing, get you working on one thing that gets you on the right track to good ball striking no matter who you are or what your skill level is at golf. This simply works. And the number one thing you should be working on in the golf swing is contact. Being able to hit the ball first and take a nice divot on the front side of the ball. 
What you should really be working on is creating solid contact with the golf ball. You'll hit the ball further with less effort if you can hit it consistently on the center of the club face and you can hit the ball first and take a divot on the front side. If you can't hit the ball first and take a divot on the front side, you shouldn't be working on anything else in your golf game. We start here and we continue to make this our top priority. Being able to hit ball first and take a divot, hearing that nice crispy impact sound. So, what do we need to do to achieve crispy contact with the ball? We need to do a couple of things. The first thing you need to understand is that this golf club, if you want it to come into the ground the same spot every time, your left arm, if you're a right-handed player, your lead arm must be straight. So if this arm stays straight, it is allowed to enter the ground at the same spot every single time, which means crispy contact for you. So at the top of my golf swing, the lead arm should be straight, coming into near impact, lead arm is straight, impact, lead arm is straight, through impact, lead arm is straight. That is a must have. If you're not able to get the arm straight, you must force it straight. Trust me, you can't go without keeping this arm straight. You have to do it. The second thing you have to do is think about what you're doing with your weight in your golf swing. Are you shifting your weight? So if you want to have the most consistent golf swing, you shouldn't be shifting your weight, and here's why. The second I make any lateral motion, any shifting, look what happens with my lead arm. It moves behind the ball. You See that right there? It's moving behind the golf ball, which means even if I kept my arm straight, if I keep my weight back, I will hit behind the ball. Inconsistent contact, hit behind it or scoop it and hit it thin. It's a very common problem today. So we must think about where the weight's going. Where's your weight going? Your weight should be staying relatively centered in the golf swing, meaning that it's not doing any shifting or swaying. So you have to start thinking about rotation instead of sway. See, swaying doesn't like rotation. If I rotate, I don't sway. But if you, if you don't rotate, if you lock your hips and your lower body, you will sway. And we don't want that because that's causing inconsistent contact. So when I put these two things together, the weight staying centered, meaning that I'm favoring my front side with the weight and keeping it there, and I've got the lead arm straight, that allows the club to come into the ground the same spot every time, always on the front side of the ball. Divot on the front side, crispy contact all day long. If you kept me here and doing this, I would hit ball first, take a divot all day long. When you get into the full swing, you need to focus on these two big keys. The weight must stay forward, the arms must stay straight. You will hit the ball very solid. When I go about practicing my golf swing, I'm always going back to doing these two things. I think about where's my contact point. Is the club coming into the ground the same spot every time? If it's not, Houston, we've got a problem and we've got to fix it fast because my priority is solid contact no matter what and it should be yours too. So when you're practicing, don't go through and do a big wraparound finish, especially for what I'm about to show you right here. This is the magic secret. This is the glue. This is, it's just beautiful deliciousness for the golf swing. What you need to do is think about stopping short, meaning that your club, you should stop about here in the follow through. The reason for that's simple. It gets you training good impact. Most people swing through with the wraparound and that gets you thinking about doing this. So you see the breakdown of the arms, the flipping, the inconsistent things you're doing right now. What you gotta do is think about stopping short. Because when you focus on stopping short, look where my arms are. The lead arm is straight, the weight is forward, and I hit that really solid. So when you stop short, you think about good impact. You don't think about finishing the swing, you're just all about impact. There's another solid one. And you could do this all day long, stopping right here. You're taking all your momentum, you're taking a truck going 100 miles an hour, and you are stopping it into a wall. I'm not slowing down, I'm accelerating, but I'm throwing that truck right into the wall, the club head right into the wall at 100 miles an hour. So it's a lot of effort, boom, hitting that wall, stopping. And it's telling me, yeah, I've got some good gravy right here. Look at that. I've got forward shaft lean at impact because impact's telling you what you're doing in the follow through. Look at that. That's magic. That's magic right there. So a lot of golfers like to practice at home. 
How do you know if you're doing good contact on a mat at home or you're in your garage? Well, you don't really know. So that's why I love to practice with instant feedback using something really cool. This thing right here is called the divot board and it has revolutionized my practice sessions because it tells me exactly where this club comes into the ground. There's the ball and anything where the club makes a mark, it leaves a trail. Your path of the club, so your path could be going neutral or in the out or across, telling you everything you need to know about the path of your club which causes the curve of the ball. But it also tells you whether you hit it on the center, off the heel, or even off the toe. So there's so much feedback right here that you can't get on a mat or just off your dry, hitting balls off your driveway into a net. So I actually use this in my practice sessions in my yard because I need to know where this club is coming into the ground. The best part about this is that you don't need a golf ball to practice getting good contact. You simply get feedback right off the ground. Sure, you can go into your yard and you can practice with just a club and taking nice divots out of your lawn, but I'm not sure your spouse would be too okay with that, or maybe even your HOA, when we don't want to deal with that. So using the divot board allows you to take your divot board onto your lawn, and then you can simply take divots out of the divot board and understand that you're getting really crispy contact with the golf ball. Check that out right there. That's what you need to see every single time. This is what the pros are doing. You hit the ball first and you got a divot on the front side of the golf ball. If you're not doing this, you're going to struggle forever until you can do this. So the divot board allows me to practice anywhere, anytime, getting solid contact with the ball. So what am I working on here? Once again, my weight staying forward. I'm not shifting my weight. My lead arm is staying straight. When I focus on these things, I'm really confident that I'll hit the ball first and I'll take a divot on the front side of the ball. Right there, ball first, divot on front side. Now you don't want it going too far forward. That's about as far forward as I'd be happy with. Like if you start taking divots way out here, you're definitely hitting it thin. So we don't want to be doing that. But look at this. I'm able to practice. I don't even need a ball and I can control my contact point. So I've got my arm staying straight and I'm keeping my weight forward which helps me to have a consistent contact point with the ground. Ooh, that was mashed right there. Check out the divot. Ball first, taking a divot. And all I'm doing is working on those two simple things. You don't have to work on a million things in your golf swing. You just have to get good contact consistently shot in, shot out. Once you master this, you work on other pieces like adding power to the stroke. But trust me, you're gonna have so much fun doing this, hitting good contact, that you can play great golf just doing this. Lead arm staying straight, weight staying forward. Here we go again. Divot always on front side of the ball, instant feedback. This is so powerful because when you have a device that measures where the club comes into the ground, you don't need a golf ball, you could do this outside or inside your house even on a rainy day and I know we love golf so much we want to get crispy contact all the time so we practice all the time I'm working on the right things I'm working on contact all day long crispy 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 if you can do this and I know you're going to do this correctly because you've got the tips you need to do to create consistent impact right here in this video use a divot board or something that can measure club coming into the ground this is an invaluable practice tool. Now check out this life-changing transformation for one of my students. So good old golfers, meet Daryl. Daryl came to me for an in-person golf lesson and he was struggling with bad contact. In fact, he had never taken a divot consistently in front of the golf ball. And like most of you who come to my channel, you're struggling with getting crispy contact. So Daryl struggles with flipping. And this is probably the biggest problem I see in the golf swing among all amateur golfers. The arms breaking down after impact and the club shaft pointing down range like this. So basically you're losing all your power and consistency because the arms are breaking down. Daryl and I worked really hard to get his arms straight after impact to help him take a divot on the front side of the golf ball. Hitting ball first getting that beautiful buttery feeling of crispy impact. So you see me here holding a stick and the whole idea of me holding the stick here it turns out that Daryl 
would overswing in his follow through. So do that big wraparound finish. But for me to get him to stop flipping, I put a stick there and said, don't go past that stick. And what this did is it created some beautiful impact lines. After impact, you see the arms staying straight and extended with the club shaft pointing down at the ground. The first words out of his mouth when he did this correctly were, that feels extremely weird, which is good because he was coming from flipping and flipping was comfortable. Flipping out was comfortable. So getting the arms straight and extended will feel very weird. As you can see, he's able to create a divot now in this beautiful rehearsal. So then we go to round two. I keep the stick there and he is gonna hit a ball now with the same feeling. So stick is right here. Don't swing past that stick. Keep the arms extended through the shot. Here is the result. Coming into impact. Beautiful impact position right here. There's this magical thing right here. That's called a divot. That's deep fried KFC contact. And after impact, we also see beautiful extension of the arms and the club shaft pointing down at the ground. When looking at a pro golfer, we need to create a situation for you to have crispy contact. Flipping, you have a million different points of contact. But if you can keep the elbows together, the arms straight, and the weight forward, you will hit it crispy every single time. You give yourself the best chance to hit it crispy. So after impact, you should be trying to get to this position right here, where the arms are straight and extended with the club shaft pointing down at the ground, at least to this point in the golf swing. After that, you can follow through. When looking at old Daryl here on the left, we see the dreaded flipping. At the same point of downswing, in the new golf swing, we see arms straight and extended through the golf shot. The old Daryl would never take a divot on the front side of the golf ball with the flip. This breaking down of the arms causes the club to go up through the shot, so the club doesn't come into the ground in front of the ball. Usually you're scooping and hitting it thin, or you're hitting behind the golf ball. In the new Daryl, he will hit ball first and take a divot on the front side every time he gets this club into this position. He's got the arm straight and extended club shaft pointing down at the ground. If, he, if you can just focus on pointing that club shaft down at the ground instead of in the old where he's pointing it down range, you are going to hit the ball so much more solid. Lastly, we need to keep this solid crispy impact going. So we take a lovely Home Depot driveway marker alignment stick best $2 training aid ever. You place it in the ground at a diagonal like so. And what this is going to do is it's going to act as if it's your golf instructor holding a stick right here telling you to stop short. So if I go beyond this point, I'll hit the stick, probably do my wraparound finish. We don't really want to do that. I want to stop very short. So probably right about there is about as extreme as it will get. If you're having trouble getting quality impact, keep it at a spot where you're really going to hit it short. Change the angle if you want it a little bit easier. So you can move it upwards like this. If I change the angle I can go a little bit further. Right about there is where I would like to see it for at least my swing and for the average golfer. Because that tells you if you can get to here stopping short you can see the arms are both straight and then the club is pointing down at the ground. That's what you need for crispy contact. Take a three-quarter swing stop short. Look, I hit the stick. It's okay to hit the stick. That's just there to tell me to stop so that I can see quality impact, quality impact. So that tells you you're working on the right things. Now what do we do? We combine it all together so that you can be staying on the right track with your golf swing even from home. You don't need a driving range. You don't need a whole bunch of buckets of balls to do this. I'm not using a ball. I know the instant feedback's right here with the divot board and with this alignment stick in the ground. So you gotta put it in a spot where it's going to be a threat. You will hit it with the alignment stick, that's okay. Divot board through to alignment stick. The two best things you need to groove solid impact all day long. Here we go, short three quarter swing. Stopping short, all right. Little chunky monkey there, I hit slowly behind it. Oh darn. We're gonna to continue to work on it until I get it solid. 
So something happened where I hit behind the ball just slightly. But you know you're working on the right things because not shifting my weight, arms are staying straight. That's a great poem, isn't it? Not shifting my weight and my arms are staying straight. Here we go again. Not shifting my weight, arms are staying straight. Wow! Did you see that alignment stick? Not a bad shot, maybe a little thin. Where'd my alignment stick go? I stopped short, but not short enough. It's right over here in the woods, stabbed into the middle of a tree. Continue to work it out. Divot board, stopping short. Good post impact, bad contact with the ball, a little behind it, but not really worried because I know when I get through impact that my impact is, my impact position is so solid. Here we go again, working on stopping short. So I'm pointing the club down at the ground. That's really the secret gravy right there. Wait forward. Well, good shot. <laughs> The stick flew away again. What's that tell me? It tells me I swung too far through in the forward swing. But, good contact. Make sure there are no women or children around when you're doing this so that nobody gets impaled by a stick. We would not want that. But I'm really liking the results here in my practice session. This is my practice session. Really, Tom? You don't need a huge bucket of balls? Yeah, you don't. You just do this. You do this and then you could take it to the golf course. So I'm just working on getting through impact, a little chunky there. But once I've finished this, you take away the divot board, you take away the stick, and then you simply will hit golf shots. Maybe you do a little rehearsal, right to there, just like you have the drill nice and solid right there. And I should be trying to replicate the drill. I should be trying to point that club down, stop and short. There. Nice and solid. You can see the same habits form. Good impact, good impact, good impact. So what should you be working on in your golf swing? You should be working on hitting the ball first, taking a divot on the front side of the ball. The way we do that Lead arm stays straight, the weight stays forward. If you can do those two things, which are really simple to remember, you're going to play great golf. Hey there, Segudo golfers, Tom Segudo here, and today we're looking at a really easy way to stop rushing your golf swing with my favorite tempo trick. A lot of golfers will try and rush down. There's a strong urge to hit, hit at the ball. And when you do this, you lose the power sources. Now the power sources are your folded arm, your wrists, Two really good examples here. They try and hit at, and this happens. The power sources get lost early. See my arms straightening early, the wrists unhinging early. But if I want more speed, I need this to stay folded in, tucked in, and then an explosion of all the power sources through the ball. That means you have to feel the downswing being excruciatingly slow for this to work well. So we'll start with a smooth tempoed swing, and I want you to feel this. Before you hit the ball, go to the top of your backswing, and we're going to do a 10 count back to the ball. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You see how slow that was? That's how I want you to feel your downswing in your normal golf swing. Now what happened when I did that 10 count? Power sources were stored. Checking to see if my power sources are stored. Clubs parallel with the ground. Right arm still folded into impact. The slower I go with this, the better I can store that power. The faster, the more I try and rush, the more likely it is you're going to throw away your power sources. So you start off nice and slow. The second thing you'll do is hit a ball with that feeling, just really slow. You can go to the top backswing normal, but then start hitting the brakes. Okay, not concerned with result, just looking at pace. You want to feel that club slowing down. At least the tempo feels really slow. Then, when you hit a shot, I want you to hit the brakes on 
and then feel an explosion of power out front. So we're going slow, 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 explode. And that explosion is not some sort of just let the club hit the ball type thing. It is a push. So I'm going down, slow, and I'm extending both arms to straight. I'm stopping short. You can see all the speed I got on that shot. That's a tremendous amount of speed. But you can hear the explosion off the club face. That's me not thinking about speeding up the downswing at all, but rather creating the most speed I can out here, which comes from slowing down here, hitting the brakes, hitting the brakes. I'm gonna hit a normal shot now, hitting the brakes in my downswing. That was perfect, absolutely perfect. And the sound, whoosh, right on the center of the face. You can't beat it. It's delicious contact with the ball. And I don't feel the downswing speeding up. If anything, if I want to hit it farther, I feel it slowing down. So the slower I can feel it, the farther it goes. That one felt really slow. That was launched. A little bit of a pull, but wow. You mean the ball's getting smaller faster. It's getting smaller faster. It's going out into oblivion. It's going into the distance. And I feel I'm putting the brakes on so hard. Let's go more molasses here. Extra thick molasses. Now what you're seeing is a smooth swing. You're seeing it looks like a really fast, normal swing. It looks like I'm not slowing down my downswing at all. But I'm feeling, when I start going from here down to here, I'm feeling negative 50% speed. I'm feeling like it's molasses falling down a slope. Something you need to avoid is don't try and rush into hitting the ball. Your focus is not to hit the ball. The club's gonna get in the way and send the ball for you. If you have the correct form, it's going to just happen. That's the beauty of this. So what you need to do is focus more on the follow through than actually hitting the ball. If I focus on getting to here with my arms straight, I will have plenty of club head speed and it doesn't matter how fast or how slow my tempo is. The slowest part is the downswing and the ball is going farther, mind blown. Another way you can avoid rushing your downswing is by training with one of these. This is the lag shot. It's a weighted club with a whippy shaft and it's going to teach you how to never rush your swing again. If I try and rush my swing, the weight of the club kicks down. But if I have the proper tempo, I feel the weight doesn't kick, but rather the weight kicks down after impact, which is what you want. You don't want to throw away the power early. That's actually the feeling of you throwing away power, the club head kicking down, the shaft bending down. For me to get the lag shot to work correctly, I have to feel that the club does not kick downward in the downswing. So that means that's kicked downward after. And that is how I can use the power sources in my swing without a whole lot of effort. I can still hit the ball farther. I'm feeling the downswing even slower and the lag shot's forcing me to hit the brakes here because if I want to step on it, it I don't feel, I mean, I can't hit it. I can't, it won't let me. It doesn't want me to make a bad swing. That's right, lag shot. Yeah, you said I rushed that one. It won't let you because you won't be able to hit the ball. You won't feel like you can hit the ball. You'll feel the club kicking in towards your body or out away from your body. You'll feel it kicking all over the place everywhere but the ball when you do it incorrectly. So when I really slow this down, and I feel it kicking down after the ball, I can actually get a really nice divot, and I feel the release of all the speed through impact. You can get a lag shot. Check out the link in the comments in the description below. I got you a nice discount on that. It's one of my favorite training aids because it doesn't let you screw up. It's like having your own golf instructor along the way. So after I train with the lag shot, I take out my regular club and I want to feel just like I had that lag shot. Whoop, right there. I'm hitting the brakes on and then whew, explosion. Club's kicking down after impact. All right, I rushed my swing a little bit there. I didn't feel like it was as crispy. I tried to hit at the ball. We can improve on that. We're better than that. Let it be slower. Let the club explode through impact. Yeah, that's it. 
That's why we play golf right there. Let's do another one. We got another ball here. Why not? Mm. So Segundo golfers, you know what to do. Make the downswing slower. Your golf swing will go faster with a lot less effort. Thanks for tuning in today, and I'll see you in a future episode. Great ball striking is as simple as remembering the letter K. Oh, that feels so good. Thinking about the letter K will change everything in your golf swing. It will get you hitting the ball consistently, powerfully, and you'll be playing the best golf of your life. The letter K is this. When I get to the top of my backswing, you'll see that I've got a straight front side, and I've got that K-shaped trail side. And this is because my weight is on the front leg during the golf swing, which is key for consistent contact. Keeping my weight forward allows me to hit ball first, take a divot after every single time. It's a very centered golf swing. Another thing that happens when you get this K-shape, your hips turn more and your shoulders turn more. So by focusing on getting a K, I can create more power with a ton less effort. And plus, it's very body friendly. You'll play golf the rest of your life, pain free, focusing on getting a K in your swing or a backwards K if you're a right-handed player. I've got this stick here to show you how your body should move in the golf swing. You should place the stick in the ground where it's in line with your hips and it's behind me just slightly, kind of like this. We're not going to touch the stick. Most amateur golfers struggle with swaying. So you'll end up running into the stick. You'll end up losing your K. That's a big problem. You don't want to lose the K. You know K is needed for great ball striking. Golfers on TV too, look for the K. You're gonna see more of this. You'll never see a sway. Most golfers will sway because they're not turning their hips. They're keeping this leg flexed. And you're breaking up your K. You end up breaking up your arms too. So it doesn't look like a powerful golf swing. You're not storing any power. To do the opposite, to get the K, you need one thing first, and that's weight forward. So I'm setting a K here at setup. As I swing, I want to keep the K intact. To top of backswing, and even to downswing, you'll still see that this front side, though it's moved a little bit more forward, I still got that K shape, and I'm getting extension in my body. It's powerful, very powerful. So I set the weight forward first, and I just focus on keeping it there and keeping my head in place throughout the swing. I will strike the ground repeatedly in the same spot. Ball divot, ball divot, ball divot. And it works every time you do it. This is not a gimmick, this is not magic. There's no secrets to good golf, there's no secrets. These things will happen. Wait forward, contact point is here. Arm straight, contact point, always in front of the ball. Head in place, I don't move my contact point. Look at that. That's awesome. Isn't that great? You don't have to think a million different things. You just gotta set the weight forward. Keep your head in place, keep the lead arm straight, set the K, keep the K. So with this stick here, I wanna make sure that I'm never touching it. And for a lot of you, it might feel like you're, you're going this way, and that's okay. It's okay, get my drift there. So I'd set the K, and I even focus on going more forward with the K. And I will strike it powerful. I barely touched that ball. Let's see what fly scope said. Okay, I swung at 75 miles an hour. I just barely tapped it. Let's try a full one without, without even trying to swing hard. It's a good visual. Setting the K, keep the K. 60% swing. Not a whole lot of effort there. I definitely felt a lot more speed. 95.4 club head speed. Some of you will say, Tom, that's a reverse pivot. You can't play good golf with a reverse pivot. It's not a reverse pivot. You gotta get this out of your head. Why is it not a reverse pivot? Because there's nothing reversing. Weight's forward, weight moves more forward, weight moves more forward. It's all just that way. And if you wanna call it reverse, reverse pivot, I really don't care because the results are awesome. So who cares? Go back to your world of shifting and lifting and being miserable. For those of you who want to play great golf, we set the K, we envision that we keep the K, and I will strike the ball well. It has to happen. That one felt good. Yep, 95.6 mile an hour club head speed again. You can't have any club head speed with the weight forward. How many times do I hear that comment? You're not athletic. Who really cares? 
I know many of you, 99% of you, get it because you're playing excellent golf with the K-shape. Mm, you can hear it. It's like a air cannon. I just tap in the ball. I'm just tapping it. Just tapping it. 95.9 club head speed with just a dink seven iron. I'm not even trying to hit it hard because I'm loading all the power sources that exist in the K. Let's go for a big kahuna. Let's load this one up, big K. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Just adding more arcs, more hips, more K. Oh yeah, 96, 96.3, 96.3, 174.4 carry into a stiff breeze. That's great. Plenty of club head speed there without trying too hard. That was like an 80% swing. So you should focus on your hips doing a lateral movement towards a target in the backswing. Sounds crazy. I know. Everything you've been told in your whole life has been to shift your weight back. But you don't need to do that. Shifting your weight back shifts your contact point. And it's not even weight anyway. When people say they're shifting weight, they're really shifting pressure. So they say the pressure shift to the right side because nobody's shifting weight. If I shift my center of mass, that's a weight shift. Pressure shift, big difference between the two. Think about an outfielder ready to get a ball. So the ball's going this way. I gotta go run this way, a sprint. So where's my weight? Well, my weight's centered right now. I'm gonna sprint towards that ball. I pressure shift off the right, but my weight's here now. That's the easiest way to think about it. My weight's not back, it's pressure. We're trying to stay centered with the K. And that ball is just poof, crushing it. And your body will love you too. I can't tell you how many golfers come into my online golf school, Segudo.golf, and they say, oh man, you know, I'm like 65, 70 years old, my back hurts, my knee hurts. I'm used to flexing my leg. I'm used to lifting my arms and keeping it flexed and restricting my body. And then when they go through the program, they're learning how to open up the body. So you, you stop keeping all the resistance in your swing. You keep the weight forward and you, you allow the body to turn. And then you feel like you're swinging in a hot tub. It feels so easy and effortless. Like that movie Titanic. Oh, that whole scene. And, <laughs> and then they'll say, like, uh, recently, here was a guy, disabled veteran. He couldn't play golf at all. And then he just recently played 72, he played 90 holes of golf. So he had four rounds plus a practice round on his buddy's trip. Before that, he could barely play nine. And after going through the school program, he's still in it. He's playing golf without pain. I mean, think about the joy there. And it's better golf, much better golf. He's up in the high 70s, low 80s now. He came down from the 90s. He came from not even playing. Now he's playing and having a great time. So that's what's going on in that program. Fun. Camera, please stay up. Don't fall over. I need you. This wind is brutal. Okay, set the K. Think about the K. Think about the K. Barely swinging. That is awesome. You will be a great ball striker with a K shape. I love that. I love that. That never gets old. We got some more golf balls in this bucket. Da -da -da -da. It's like music. This is how you should practice it too. You should just do some slow swings like this. I'm moving my hips towards a target. Finish with my weight forward. It doesn't happen overnight. You know, it's gonna be weird. But in my seguro.golf online golf school, there's a whole program step-by-step. Step. You'll just work through it. You'll get comfortable with it as you do it. It's pretty repeatable. That was my least favorite one out of all of those. Let's do another one. Let's make up for it. Oh my goodness, Tom, you hit just slightly behind that. Don't ever do that again. There we go. 
I will not chunk behind the ball. Write that on the board a million times. I will set the K, yes. I will keep the K, yes. Wait forward, yes. Good. Okay. Wow. And we got these nice divot patches too. From playing great golf with the K. Set your K and your ball striking is gonna be more than okay. It's gonna be brilliant. You're gonna love it. Join Segudo.golf. It's where you can play the best golf of your life now. Over 4,000 members, happy members playing the best golf of their life. Jump in there. What are you waiting for? Life's far too short to be wallowing around in misery. You could be playing the best golf of your life. You get one life, one chance to strike it good. Don't waste it. Let's do it right now. I'll see you in a future episode. This golf tip could change your life, meaning it's going to get you on the gravy train to hitting seriously crispy golf shots. Great ball striking. This is the key. All of the pros do this, and not a lot of amateurs do this. So what does that mean for you? It means you need to do this to be a great ball striker. What I'm talking about in the golf swing today is the importance of tilting. Far too many golfers will do this in the golf swing. They'll start their swing and then this front shoulder begins raising up later in the golf swing to the point where your spine is getting more vertical. You're losing your relationship with the ball. And if you want to hit the ball well, you must keep your body's relationship to it throughout the whole swing. So this is a relationship, this is no relationship. This is a baseball player, this is a golfer. If I want to hit this ball first and take a nice divot, which I definitely do, and if you want to, you must tilt in the golf swing to hit it solid. So when we look at the best players in the world, all the tour players, they all tilt. You may have noticed I'm filming from a 45 degree angle here. I'm doing that so that you can see that I am tilting in the golf swing. What is tilt? You've never heard of tilt before, and you need to know this. Tilt is your spine side bending towards a target, like this. So like you're an airplane, and you're banking your wings all the way towards a target. This is tilt in the backswing. You also tilt in the downswing. That's a story for another day. So in the golf swing, the best players continue to tilt their spine more and more towards the target. You see that tilt right there? From the front view, you won't see it. You actually see that. I'm I'm over the ball. So from the front you see this, from the side you see tilt. The best players will continue to turn and tilt this lead shoulder, this front shoulder, down, 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 more, all the way to the top of the backswing. It looks something like this. Gradually left tilting. For me it's left tilting. So left tilting, left tilting, left tilting, left tilting. All the way. All the way to the top. Boom. Now I'm over the ball, I'm ready to strike it really solid. And if you watch anybody from a 45 degree angle that's a pro, you will see tilt. It's impossible to hit the ball well without tilt. If I don't have tilt, I'm, I'm basically standing up. And I don't tilt, I'm gonna miss the ball. There's a top shot. If I tilt, I'm going to find the ball. I'm going to find the ground. So no tilt, that was romantic. And then we have tilt, full tilt. That was pureed, extremely crispy. Which one would you rather have? No tilt, top, or tilt, crispy? My best guess is you're on YouTube looking up golf tips because you want to hit it crispy. So you're going to want to tilt. A lot of golfers don't know this. A lot of them are taught to turn their shoulders. Just turn the shoulders. Just give them a good turn. Get your back to the target, like this. What happens with this front shoulder though when you're doing that? It's basically going level across your body, so you're turning plenty, you're turning, but you're not tilting. So if we throw the tilt in there, you actually see this shoulder going down instead of level, down. Shoulder down to hit the ground. The, t the left shoulder continues to move more and more down. Justin Rose explained it best. There's a video of him out there saying that he's working on tilting to the top. So that's his whole swing thought. And he hits the ball really well. He's the top player in the world. He thinks about left tilting to the top. So as he swings back, he's continuing to tilt. 
The other thing I'm working on really is mainly setup at the moment. Just trying to feel like I'm a little bit more pressed into my left leg, 60-40, which I think is always good for, you know, good iron, good, good striking with the irons. And then I'm trying to feel like I'm staying on the ball. So just working on my kind of like my tilts rather than feeling like I'm turning off it and being sort of pulled off the ball into my right side. So, instead of turn to the top, tilt to the top. That's what we're working on. And you see players like Jack Nicholas, Sam Snead. Jack Nicholas, he had his head doing this. You'll find that your head can start to do that when you tilt. He had a deep shoulder, shoulders down. Sam Snead, very much so. They're the best players in the world. Anybody, Tiger Woods tilts. Everybody on tour tilts. You just can't get around it. That means you need to tilt. And it's a move that your spine is designed to do. You are designed to make this move. Your spine can tilt. It's okay. It's good that it's designed to do that so we can hit golf balls. So, now that you know you need to tilt, how do we tilt? Well, you saw the plane analogy. This is a great way to feel tilt. You must bank your plane towards a target. Banking. You can also bank it away from the target. You just get the feeling of what tilt is. For many of you, you're used to turning, and you can turn so well. But you're just a little tilt away from being awesome. So you need to add this. And how much do you need to add? All of it. All of it. Like when you have a cinnamon roll, and you've got icing, how much icing do you add? All of it. Why? Because it's good. It's good for you. So in the golf swing, you'll see a full left tilt here. So you see this tilt I'm doing? That's me banking my plane. That's a full tilt of my spine. I can't go any further than this. That's as much as I can bank my plane. When I swing from this view, you're going to see the same amount of tilt. We'll even put my swing up to compare. I've got my tilt towards the ball here at setup. I just keep that tilt. That's how I'm able to hit the ball solid almost every single time. And that's why this tip is going to change your life because you'll start hitting the ball solid almost every single time. By the way, if you want to have the top three keys you need to be a great ball striker, check out the link below, go.segudo.golf. It's a free mini course that'll get you hitting the ball really solid. That's how you can hit the ball solid. Tilting is indispensable. It's gold. It's gold, I tell you. There's gold in them hills. If I didn't tilt, I would hit the ball so bad, I probably wouldn't even hit the ball that well. You saw the top shot earlier. Just getting the feel for that tilt. So when you're swinging, you should be doing this very slowly. And the feeling is Justin Rose's tilt to the top, gradually moving this shoulder more and more and more down. It's got to get all the way to here, the top of your backswing. It has to. It has to. Just for me exaggerating it here, from the front view, it could feel like this. From the front. You could feel this, you'll be actually right here. You could feel this. So hit a shot with that feel, tilting all the way to the top, just to get that feeling. Once you've done a few of those, give yourself a nice regular swing. Don't think too much about it, just a little tilt here. Nice shot, really crispy on the center of the face, by the way. I'm not joking about this stuff. It's so powerful. You see that white, those white marks? Start from the brown, I gotta clean the face. All those white marks are indents of the golf ball in the grooves from a lot, just shellacking it. Boom, boom, boom. That's the shoulder going down, center of the face. Good strike. Do we do it with the driver? Oh, yes, we do. You wouldn't hit the driver well without tilting. So you need tilt to hit the driver well. From the front view, the only difference with the driver, it's a longer club. I still have tilt to the ground. So top of backswing, I still have tilt. I'm not fully level. You can get away with it with a driver. A lot of you can 
hit driver from a level position. It's the easiest club to hit level because it's teed up. But if you want to hit it on the center and really get that mash, that, that mashed potatoes, that light the candle, that sensation of goodness, you've got to keep the tilt throughout the golf swing. I'm always left tilting. If you're right-handed, you are always left tilting to the top. Always toward the target with the tilt. If you're left-handed, it's the opposite, right tilting. Do it nice and slow here, tilting. So you feel the airplane, the airplane wings. It's gonna feel like a bigger backswing too. You're opening up your body. Give yourself tilt to the top. That feels so solid. So every club in the bag, you need this. And if you need this, why aren't you out in the driving range right now? Maybe you are doing this right now. Get out there and start tilting. For crying out loud, golfing world, get out there and start tilting. If everybody just started tilting, you would experience ball striking beyond your imagination. It's not just for pros to hit the ball crispy. That's the whole point of this channel, so that you can hit the ball crispy too, just like a pro. Heck, you can have more fun. You don't have all the pressure of being on TV. We have more fun. So, Segudo so Golfers, thanks for tuning in today. If you're looking for a way to play your best golf right now, check out my website, Segudo.golf. It's a complete golf swing training program designed to help you make the most out of the game you love. Life's far too short to play bad golf. So get on the train to playing the best golf of your life with Segudo.golf. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future episode. Okay, it's no surprise that all you want to do in this game is hit crispy golf shots. You hit the ball first, take a beautiful divot on the front side of the golf ball. In today's episode, I'm going to show you golf's contact secret, meaning 99% of amateur golfers don't know how to compress the golf ball well enough. You don't get that crispy KFC feeling. And the secret lies in your wrists and the way the wrists work after impact. This is the pro move, the move the pros make to compress the golf ball shot after shot. How many of you in the audience have a contact point that looks like this? You do the good old flip of the wrists, the arms shorten up, the weight goes back, and then you spend half your time complaining on the golf course about why your golf game is so bad. 99% of you do that. I see this all the time. It's a terrible disease in the game of golf. And what it leads to is just frustration, pure frustration. You don't want to play. But when you do this with your wrist, you make this move, this new move I'm going to show you, you are going to start hitting ball first, taking a divot on the front side every time. You're going to have so much fun, you're going to, want to play more golf and you're going to beat your buddies. Is that a win? That's a win. That sounds like a ton of fun, Tom. Yes, raise your hand if you're ready for more fun. You should be. Get excited. Because today ends your golfing disease, the problem of terrible contact. When we look at what the wrists do in the golf swing, sure, we're familiar with the wrist hinging in the back swing. This is a power source. You need the wrist to hinge because it gets the club to travel farther back. A longer back swing with less effort. That's what the wrists do. It makes your golf swing so much more powerful and consistent. Now when we get the downswing, we need to keep this angle between the arm and the club shaft, the wrist angle here. That's often referred to as lag, holding the lag, getting to this position here. You're storing all this energy for a huge release of power through the golf ball after impact. So how do we make sure we apply all that power punch to the golf ball? We have to tell our wrists to go down after impact. When the wrists go down, man, you are going to find the ground and that ball's going to explode. I'm not talking like those little balloon weak things you're hitting right now, those annoying things that you're tired of. I'm talking about exploding down range. <laughs> Massive power. See, here's what it looks like when you do the flip. 
take the club back. Usually most of you are shifting your weight, doing that old move right here. Then into impact, your right arm gets longer, trail arm gets longer, you start to flip, you start to fall back, you top the golf ball, you hit it thin or you hit behind the ball. So it looks something like this. Okay, that doesn't have a lot of speed because you spend more time trying to figure out how to get this unhinging falling back hitting the golf ball when you could be spending t just a little bit of your time changing the program to compress it like this. Now that, whoo, I barely touched it. That ball's still going. This is a five iron, by the way. So the wrists have to go down after impact to hold the power. We've got the lag here. After impact, I start moving the wrist down into impact like this, through the ball. I'm not rolling the hands over. I'm not scooping the ice cream cone. Ice cream only belongs for dessert, not in your golf swing. So when I say the wrists move down, what do I mean? I quite literally mean the wrists unhinge after impact, unhinge down down because the wrists are storing power. Stored power, releasing power. Stored power, releasing power. So you have this stored power, now we need to release the power after impact and look at my impact position, look at post impact. You want the hands forward, that beautiful forward shaft lean. Look at that, it's right there. I will get forward shaft lean 100% of the time if the wrists hinge down. It's a guarantee. And there are a few guarantees in life in golf like that where you can get forward shaft lean every time. And you don't have to think so much about it. I'm not thinking. You hear that? It's like spanking the club against a cement wall. It like, sounds like you're whacking the crap out of it. Put it down. Oh, that's so much fun. That sound never gets old. It's so much fun. So do this with your wrists right now. Hold the club out in front of you like this. Hinge them all the way up. Okay, that's full wrist hinge. Now, take them and unhinge them all the way, meaning there's no wrist hinge. That's, that's the sensation after impact you need to feel. Down. Now, why do I say down? Because it's easier for you to think of it this way. If you imagine that there is a bullseye, and I'm gonna use this golf ball as an example. Put this golf ball in front of me, and I want this club to point down at that golf ball after impact if I want to hit it solid, if I'm doing this correctly. If you do this incorrectly, your golf club will flip, club points down range. You want the club to point down at that ball right there. So here we go. I'm going to hit a shot and focus on pointing the club down at that spot. So there we go, club pointing down at ball, super mega compression on that golf ball. Club down, that gets you unhinging the wrist. And you see the compression. You cannot deny that it's there. The pro-like secret, and all the pros are so good at contact, they hit the ground in front of the ball every time. This is how you do that. You set up a line like this, and then you start imagining these bullseyes in front of the golf ball. So we've got five golf balls here, six golf balls. There's a spot right there I want to hit. I want to point the club down at that spot right there. All right, so I'm rehearsing that move. I'm getting that feel. Let's point the club at that spot. Divot in front of the golf ball. Divot in front of the golf ball. One of the best things you can do for your game. Here we go again. Look at that, unhinging the wrist. Nobody does this. Nobody in the amateur world of golf does this. Another divot in front of the ball. How much thought am I giving to this? Not much. Because I know if I do this correctly, divots in the front side of the ball. And this will build up into your full swing, but you need to start slow. Don't just jump in and do full swings. You've never done this before. You're coming from this. You're coming from the old flip. You need to get this club pointing down. Woo! Another one right in the center. Right in the center. 
around the center. If you're looking to do that, get that kind of compression, check out my website, segudo.golf, 10 bucks a month to play the best golf of your life. What are you waiting for? Life is far too short to play bad golf. You're gonna learn how to do super compression with the golf ball. That is fun. Golf is fun. Golf can be a ton of fun if you let it, if you invest in your game. Oh my goodness, that's so much fun. You know, it's like Thanksgiving dinner. Just buttering up Texas toast. Maybe putting butter on top of some steak. I know some of you like to do that. I like to do that too. Get a little creamy horseradish on it. That is six in a row. You, know, you just can't, you can't screw this up. Okay, now we take it into the full swing, but we don't go full, and here's why. Because I know you're gonna wanna go back to this. No, eh, we're done with that. I need you to work on this. Finish here, just for some time being, until you get this right. You gotta be able to hit ball, take a divot in the front side of the ball every time. I don't mess around with this. I tell students, hey, work on this until you can hit nine out of 10 clean and 10 out of 10 is the goal. Nine out of 10 clean and that, that one out of 10 that's not good, it better be a thin one. <laughs> We're trying to get every divot on the front side of this line. So half swings, this far, three quarter half swings. There, there, look at down, look at the wrists are hinging down, unhinging. Unhinging is the secret to great contact. So you set up here, we do a three quarter swing. And I'm gonna hit the ground and front of the ball. There's a divot on the front side of the ball. Oh, it's buttery. We can do it again because it's fun. Here we go again. Three quarters swing on hinge after impact. Unhinging, unhinging. Oh. I am excited about this because I know you're going to have so much more fun. That's why I teach golf. I teach golf so that the average golfer doesn't wander around in the desert. You just, the land of milk and honey is here. It's right here. It's at segudo.golf. It's right here on this channel. You don't have to spend your life wandering. Why do you play golf? Well, I play golf because I think it's a masochistic game and I enjoy the pain. Nobody says that. Unless you really do think it's that kind of type of way to play, but everybody says, I want to be more consistent. I just want to hit the ball first. I just want to take a divot on the front side. All I want is a smile after I play golf. Yeah. This will do it. This will do it. I cannot fake compression smiles. Those smiles happen after you compress the golf ball and they should happen for you. So three quarter, unhinge, there's the crispy. I'm really emphasizing that. If I was to stop here, I should. Run a little too far, getting too excited. Happens, you get too excited. That was a good shot though. I'm probably picking up about 10 yards. You'll pick up 10, 20 yards, maybe more, depending on how bad your flip was. So you're flipping out. Let me just stop right here. I'm getting too excited. Oh, compression, it's fun. Stopping short. There we go. Just to feel it. Just to feel it. This is your game on flip. This is your game on playing the wrist down. So, yes, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I love Cinnamon Toast Crunch, okay? But they got these faces. These are all the faces of Segudo golfers when they go out and they do this drill. They're literally drooling after hitting the golf ball like, oh! Deep fried sauce. Deep fried sauce. I can't believe it. I can't believe I just did that. It should happen again. It should happen every time. Oh my goodness, that contact was so good. That contact was so good. It won't, surely it can't happen again. It can't happen two in a row. Oh, yes, it can. If you point the wrist down, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Get excited, Segudo golfers. You gotta point the wrist down after impact to compress the snot out of the ball, just like the pros. So if you're looking to do this in your golf game, 
check out my website, seguto.golf. 10 bucks a month to play the best golf of your life. If you think life is far too short to play bad golf, click here to sign up for my online golf school. If you want to see more awesome golf content, click here to subscribe to my channel. And here are two fantastic selections from the Segudo Golf Archives designed to help you improve your golf game. And it's time to turn that frown upside down with some Segudo Golf. Go out there, point the wrist down, have so much more fun. Thanks for tuning in and have a rockin' week. Oh, that is so crispy. You know, I know you'd love to hit a shot just like that every single time without thinking too much over the golf ball. And today I've got a super easy swing feel and thought for you that will take a million different thoughts in your head, put into one, make the golf swing so much easier. You'll have more fun, hit it crispy just like that. The whole golf swing will work perfectly. You get that crispy feeling if you can get your shoulders to move correctly. And all I want you to think about is this. Your shoulders are right here, left shoulder, right shoulder. If you just clasp your hands together and get your arms out to straight, you're gonna feel your shoulders move. I'm rocking them back and forth like this. That is the feeling the shoulders should be like in the golf swing. So what I've done is I've taken the feeling of your hands, the arms, or just your shoulders or whatever the hips, whatever you feel in your golf swing, all those thoughts, condense it into one right here. So as you're swinging, you should be feeling how the shoulders bring the body around. So in the back swing, you feel your hips turn as you pull the shoulders back. Your trail leg straightens, the weight's staying forward. We're staying very centered. You need that to hit the ball really crispy. You need to stay centered. So there's my shoulder feel. Club comes on the ground in the same spot, just like that. Very centered, powerful golf swing awesome turn. Now on the downswing, if we do the same thing through the shot like this, your trail shoulder moves a little bit more under. And if you're one of those over the top golfers, you wouldn't be able to do this. This is very difficult to do with this drill. You're actually going to swing the other way, just like this. Now if you can throw a sack of potatoes to the target, you're going to have a perfect downswing. So this really is simplifying your golf swing a ton. Keep your body over the ball, clasp your hands, get that feel here, and then throw the sack of potatoes to the target. That's a great starting point to build crispy contact for your golf swing. What you're gonna start doing is hitting shots with this clasp hands feel. Really short chip and pitch shots like this. And they're gonna go out there beautifully with a nice divot in front side of the ball. Then you're gonna build it up into a fuller swing. How do you build up a fuller swing? You just keep taking the clasp hands further back. You keep bringing the shoulders more and more back. Remember, you clasp the hands, you've got a unit here. Hands, arms, shoulders. That's everything. So if you just swing a little bit further back, you're gonna have a farther shot, higher shot, and it's still gonna have the same crispiness of the short shot you just did. It's the same feel, just take it a little bit further back. Oh, that feels so good. Nothing changes. Nothing changes with a driver either. Three wood, long iron, nothing changes. That brings us into the follow through, the downswing. So that sack of potatoes. If you have a range basket, what you do, you're at the driving range right now watching this. If you were going to throw this down range or at the camera, watch what happens with my body lobbing this at the camera. You see that my spine gets nice and extended. I feel released out of the golf shot. This is a power move through the shot. Also, you're not doing over the top. See, if you want to get rid of it over the top, you just have to throw the basket underhand this way, which is this whole drill in a nutshell. Backswing, downswing. Put the basket away, pick up your favorite club that you love to hit so crispy and nice, and then we think about the downswing. Throw the sack of potatoes to the target. You wouldn't throw the sack of potatoes down at the ground. That's too heavy and it would probably cause injury. You could lob it this way. Some of you know this as the watermelon drill, 
but this student called it a sack of potatoes and I thought I gotta use this in an episode it's just perfect so I'm going to throw that sack of potatoes down range while it's gonna go beautiful to the target Ooh, that is mashed by the way this is a five iron so it's not the easiest club in the bag to hit just tells you it works it works with everything through the bag and it's a fun club to hit too so when you're going out to the range and you want to work on something that makes the swing easy, you don't want to do a whole lot of thinking. I just want to hit the ball crispy, Tom. I just want to hit it crispy. I don't want to think a whole lot. This is the drill for you. This is one drill. You do it in 30 seconds. 30 seconds, your golf swing's done. Go to the range. Get on with your life hitting crispy shots instead of hitting these putrid, ugly, smelly ones that don't do anything fun for you. Golf is recreation. Golf is fun. Everybody deserves to hit crispy feeling golf shots just like that without much thought. You know what does that? Shoulder feel, throw the sack of potatoes. It feels like a miracle. But really, you're just working with information that works. So, if you want to get on the train to playing the best golf of your life, check out my website, segudo.golf. It's a complete golf swing training program designed to help you play the best golf right now. Life is far too short to play bad golf. So get on the train to playing your best golf with Segudo.golf. You can click here to check out my online golf school. You can click here to subscribe to my channel. And you can also see two awesome selections from the Segudo Golf Archives designed to help you play your best golf. I'll see you in a future episode. Hey there, Segudo golfers. Tom Segudo here. And today we're looking at something that's costing you big time meaning that it's costing you shots on the golf course and it's ruining some of your golf swing happiness. It's all about the takeaway where the club is parallel with the ground. I see a lot of golfers focus on getting the club toe up in the takeaway. I've seen this in many golf magazines, many videos, all over. They say, go toe up. And that's what a good takeaway is supposed to be like. Well, there's one big problem with this and it's creating your big slice or your big pull because the club face angle determines the start direction of the golf ball. So the second I choose to open the club face is the second now at impact, it's pointing right, it's open. I'm here, I get back to the ball, there we are. So the ball's going right for the right hand player, it's going off the planet. Unless I do one thing, I have to use psycho hand manipulation. I have to figure out how to get this club face back to square. So that comes in the form of toe up and then having to rotate the hands. They'll say toe up again. So rotate the hands to toe up. A lot of hand action through the impact area. The most important moment, and you'll hear this a lot in golf instruction, the most important moment is impact. It's because at impact, everything is decided. The fate of the ball is decided between the path and the club face path determining the curve, the face determining the start direction. If I want to be a consistent golfer, I need to have a lot less variables. Getting this timed up is the roulette wheel of destruction in your golf swing because you're always timing it. You're going to be good when you're on, when your timing's working, and you're going to be bad whenever you're off, when your timing's not working. And the reality is most of the time your timing will not be working. You have to practice all day long to perfect timing. Looking at this, toe up, hit the ball, and it's going right. So if I want to hit it straight, I shouldn't do toe up. I shouldn't do toe up. I keep the toe down. Keep it down straight. Start direction of the golf ball. When you do your takeaway, you should tell your hands to not rotate. And if you're an avid toe upper, well then you know that you're one of those people that really has to rotate hands after impact. So you should focus on doing less because you can control the face more without having to use all that manipulation, all that timing of the face. I prefer, and I suggest that you do this, square here, club face angled down. So some of you say, Tom, that's a, that's a closed club face, that's not square. The golf swing is a circle on a tilted angle. So that we look at the face, it's squareness in relation to the arc. So the arc is tilted here. It should be perpendicular to the arc. If I start here set up with my hands parallel and I just take the club back doing nothing, 
the face will stay square because I'm doing nothing. I didn't, I didn't change it. This hand rotation changes the face. So that means that my hands have to change their orientation here at various parts of the swing. But if I don't change the orientation of the hands, the face will stay square. Boom. What's that look like? Looks like this. Lead hand down. That's a truly square face. Perpendicular to the arc of the swing. Here's the magic. This is why you're going to love it. When I swing through the shot, when I start like this, I swing through, I don't have to turn my hands. Ball goes to my target. I've got plenty of power. There's no power in turning the hands. That's not a legitimate power source. So I'm going to keep the face square, and then I'm going to do nothing with my hands through impact, keeping it square. That's a straight shot. You can guarantee a straight shot. Why? Because the face is square. Just like you can guarantee a rightward shot if I go toe up. Oh, I chunked it. Man, it's tough to do. Face is open. You can see that also has a big effect on my low point where that club comes into the ground too. We don't want to lose control of our low point, do we? So I'm doing nothing through impact. Now, if I was gonna go toe up and try and go toe up again, that requires all that hand action. I'm not sure where that face is gonna go. That one went left for me. So you know what, I, I turned it over too much. I turned my hands too much. So I have to turn my hands over less, okay? Let me figure out how to do that. All right, I got it right there. Just thinking about doing that is causing a lot of headaches for me because the golf swing's already got enough going on. Last thing I need is to think about turning my hands through impact. I did it right again. So I'm getting lucky here. But the control of my low point has gone down probably because it's greatly affecting my swing. So we're gonna get, a back, get away from that. We're gonna get away from that, go back to the square face again. There we go, much better strike, straighter ball flight, sounds better. When you start getting the face squarer, you're going to hit straighter, you hit the center of the face, the control over your contact points better. What else do you want with your life? That's why we play golf, to have that kind of fun. If you're looking for a way to play the best golf of your life, check out my online golf school, Segudo.golf. It's a complete golf swing training program that will show you how to do that shot after shot. Thanks for tuning in today, and I'll see you in a future episode. Hitting the center of the club face, one of the most satisfying feelings in golf. And today, I'm going to teach you how to get that feeling shot after shot with a very simple swing thought. So when we think about consistent golf swings, what comes to mind? Well, you might think of Ben Hogan, just striping the ball effortlessly down the range. You might think of Tiger Woods. You might think of a tour player. All those great ball strikers. And one thing that helps great ball strikers have a consistent swing is this. They've all got a backswing path and a downswing path that looks really the same. It's pretty much the same back and through. And if you can get your path to be consistent in your swing, you'll be consistent. Seriously, when you hear these two things, you'll probably laugh at how simple they are and then you'll say, whoa, when you try it with your golf swing. First thing is this, get your arms straight. With our arms straight, we're eliminating variables. So by getting your arms straight, you now allow the bigger muscles to control the swing. Instead of just the hands and arms going wherever, ninjing, bigger muscles allow the shoulders and body to work. You want to use the biggest muscle possible because that eliminates the need for you to control so many pieces. Whenever you try and control pieces, things go bad. We're human, that's what happens. It's just a fact of life. Simple equals better, easier for you. So arms straight, get them out in front of you. Make sure you get your elbows together. That's a great feeling. Now we've got a unit we're creating. Your shoulders, arms, and hands are now a unit. Next, and this is really going to blow your mind. Connect the arms to your body. So we're building this robot, this machine that you will become. If we get our arms connected, like I've got my elbows together, now we need to connect both these arms to the sides of your pecs. Sort of resting on top and to the side of your pecs. 
and they're glued in there. I just took some Gorilla Glue. Just imagine, I dropped them right here on your arms and you're just whoosh, stuck with your arms straight, your elbows together. Now what? What do we do? Well, I'd say at this point, let's go out and get a sandwich together like this. People won't judge you, trust me. If you're a golfer, you'll understand. So now I've got this unit with this Gorilla Glue and I can't unstick myself. I'm, I'm stuck here. What am I going to do? How do I move the club? This is the magic moment. You have to move the club with the body. You can't have any independent controllers, no variables. Now I've got to use the big muscle, the torso, to move the club. What does that mean? One path every single time for every swing. It's the consistency booster for you. Oh, I got a fire ant in my club. That's not going to be good. Hey, buddy. Buddy, this isn't gonna work. Now that you've got this feeling of the big muscles in control, we need to get this with the club in our hands. So as I swing back, I've got the same feeling, elbows together, really connected, boom. I have to use my torso to move this club. You might be sensing a whole new world of body turn, more freedom with your body. You're also sensing that the club's tracing one path back, one path through. Something that is magical is that when you get to the top of your backswing, we won't have any of this flying away. We'll actually be glued in here. And that's a huge backswing consistency key. This is money for your golf swing. It's free money, it's right there. So let's make a few swings. We'll start off nice and small. Got our chest in control, elbows together, arm straight, really connected. I'm glued, I am glued in. We're ready to take off to the moon here. And as you make short chips, you'll find the club's moving because of, that's right, the body. We're not just pulling the arms back. It's the torso, it's the chest. Nice and solid. You should find you're hitting the center of the club. Start there, hit the center of the club with the ball. Don't move up until you've done that nine out of 10, 10 out of 10 times. Then we'll kick it up a notch. What do we do? We just keep moving this torso. And if you really want to know how to get these moves down exactly, I've got a free mini course. The top three keys, you need to be a great ball striker. It's at go.segudo.golf. Check it out in the link and comments below. We'll keep this torso moving more, 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 more until we get to a full golf swing and I'm so connected. So we're going to go back further and let it fly. Get that feeling of what it's like to have the body in control and get this connection. The connection. It's essential for consistency. Swinging back. Mm. Oh, did you hear that? It just sounds like a crack in the distance. It's a great sound. Hitting right there every single time. Another really solid strike on the center of the club right there. And it's the same swing almost every single time. You know, it's the closest you'll get to being a golfing robot. We need to eliminate variables to have the same swing every time. So by getting our arms straight and connecting our upper arms to our sides, allow the body to swing the club, which gives you one path back and one path through for extreme consistency. Extreme meaning you'll have a lot more fun, you'll play a lot more golf, and my favorite part, birdies, pars, this crispy, addicting feeling time and time again. Does it work with the driver? Oh yeah. Another good shot right there. And it feels effortless. Why? The body's in charge. Your body is telling the club what to do. I don't like having to work so hard. This makes the golf swing so much easier. So here we go again. Oh, ball, what are you doing? There we go. It's okay, you'll be fine. Oh, somebody doesn't want to get hit today. Somebody doesn't want to get hit today. Let's swing before you can get off the tee. Oh, I lost a little connection there. Thanks, top flight. Good shot right there, too, on the center of the club. Top flight won't escape me that time. So you know what to do, get connected, keep those arms straight. If you're looking for a way to play the best golf of your life right now, check out my website, 
Segudo.golf. It's a complete golf swing training program that will teach you step by step how to build your swing to hit shot after shot crispy. Life is far too short to play bad golf. So start playing the best golf of your life with Segudo.golf. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome week. One of the things that separates great ball strikers from amateur golfers is where the club is positioned in the downswing. If you can get the club behind you instead of out in front of you in the downswing, you are going to see some excellent ball striking results. You'll hit the ball much straighter with less effort. The ball will hang on a string. And this is what today's episode is all about. Getting your club on the proper path in the downswing. Because let's face it, most golfers struggle with being over the top. You know, where the club moves steeper, the club's going over and it's going down, and your golf game is going downhill with that downswing. So you have to learn how to get the club shallower. You have to learn how to get the club behind you. That's what's going to make you a great ball striker. That's where consistencies come from. Consistency is born here. Inconsistency is born here. Two very different downswing positions. And there's a lot of golfers on TV with different looking swings. Some have lower hands, some have higher hands, but when it comes to the downswing, they all get in that same position. The club behind the hands, the club never going out in front of the hands. So in today's video, we're looking at what we can do to get the club behind the hands so you can get the ball farther with less effort, straighter, have more fun. The first thing you need to experience is what it feels like to get the club on the proper path. And the best way to think about it is drawing a line here. When you're standing up over the golf ball, this is a wall right here. This is the happy zone on this side of the wall. This is the death zone over here. When it comes to your downswing, you want to keep the club head in the happy zone for a very long time. So when I get my club at the top of my backswing, you should see the club head staying in the happy zone, just like it was here, all the way to where the club's parallel with the ground. That is gold right there. If you can do that, you're gonna play great golf. You'll see inconsistency if the club starts moving over into the death zone to this point here where the club's parallel off the ground. You see the club heads out in front of the hands versus behind the hands. And the difference between this foot right here, one foot, 12 inches, consistent golf, miserable golf. That's crazy, right? It's a game of inches in this sense. So when I'm starting down, I'm always keeping that club head behind the hands to this point here, where the club's parallel with the ground. I like that visual in my mind of where the club head is. Keeping the club head behind the hands in the happy zone. I can see how the club should stay behind me and there's a little bit of a baby draw. I'll find that if I get the club into the danger zone, the death zone, and I can see the club head out of my peripheral vision here, that if I get the club doing this, I'm in trouble. I'm going to hit a lot of ugly golf shots. There's a cut, a little pull fade. Now with a driver, that's going to be a big old slice. It's never coming back. You can see the difference between those two is where the club head is positioned. One is in the happy zone, the other is in the death zone. We should strive to keep it in the happy zone if we want effortless power, consistent golf. That's going to make us happy. That's why it's called the happy zone. We'll never play good golf in the death zone though. Right now, you should have a similar setup for your practice station. You can see I've got this stick in line with this stick. The key here is to do it slowly first. When you go to the top and you start down, you might feel like the hands are leading. The hands are leading, the club heads behind, and it's okay if you watch it. Just take a look at it. There we go. Always in the happy zone, and then I can hit the ball. So I'm gonna hit a shot like that, keep it in the happy zone. Club staying behind me, beautiful strike, great sound. Super aware of where that club head is. If you can feel where the club head is, you'll be a great golfer. It's when we lose sight of where this is in our mind. It's where we feel it over here that things get bad. It's when I feel it going over and across and it's in the death zone that we're struggling. So I'm always feeling the club head behind my right hip. 
and there's a beautiful little push draw again. Too bad the wind today is so brutal, but I couldn't resist sharing this with you because it feels so good when you hit the ball like that. Got my flight scope plugged in here. It's gonna tell us everything we need to know about swings in the happy zone versus swings in the death zone. So we'll start off with a nice 50% swing in the happy zone. That felt good. That's right on the ball. Beautiful push draw ball flight. Too bad it's really windy in my face, so we didn't get much out of the carry there. But club speed, 92.8. And the club path, 1.7 degrees out to the right, so slightly in to out. And that's just a beautiful little push draw. So happy zone, 92, 93 miles an hour club head speed with a seven iron, we'll take that, that's awesome. And not a whole lot of effort either, because you're doing less work when the club is behind you here. We're taking advantage of more angular momentum. What I can expect when I move this club into the death zone is that I'm going to lose some of my angular momentum that I got here. So I'll lose some club head speed, but I also lose control of my ball flight. I'll start hitting bigger fades and pulls. That'd be something I see with a lot of amateur golfers, right? They're the club getting into the death zone and heading down too much. And while I hit it solid, it's tough for me to control that ball flight because when you hit steep, you end up having to shorten up your arms into impact. And that changes where the face point, changes how I strike the ball. Flight scope is saying 149 yard carry, really got up into the wind. My club speed was 92.1, which is still pretty good. I felt like I had to work harder though to get that kind of club speed. And I was hitting down a lot more, nearly 10 degrees down. Happy zone again. Really solid strike right there. It's just going. That was beautiful, 170.9. Club at speed 94.2, so I added about a mile and a half of club speed with the club in the happy zone. Let's do another one in the death zone. Club way over in the death zone. My angle of attack is nearly 12 degrees down, so I'm hitting down a lot, very steep. Club path, 5.7 degrees left, and that's just a straight up pull, 168.9. Well, you can see the difference in ball flight is just amazing between those two. I won't be able to get a lot of distance out of that steep downswing. I'm not working too hard here to hit at that 170 yard seven iron. Mmm, that was beauty. Another push draw. Oh, that was juiced. That was like steroid or a baseball. Look at that. Nearly zeroed my path and face. Carries 184.1. Club speed is 96.2. Let's put together a little grouping. Three. These are nuked, still in the air. Wow, that one was long. 194.8. Jeez, that's a beautiful push draw. Ball just exploded off the face. That's what I'm talking about. Woo, we're still in the air. Awesome. Good shot. You know what, I don't even wanna to go to the death zone after that, but we'll do it anyway, because I told you I'd hit five. Nowhere near as solid. Divot's pointing left. Messed up the beautiful divot pile. That was a lot of death zone right there. That was a good old top. That's what happens when you get in the death zone. Unpredictability. We want predictability. Really steep and down. That is not gonna work with a longer club. Might get away with it with a nine through seven iron, but nothing longer than that. Okay, let's look at the grouping here. We got five uglies. It's 161.4, 93.3 mile an hour club head speed. Here's another ugly, that was the cold top. 38 yards of carry, wow, I really got all that one. Here's another one, 9.6 degrees left, so swinging across at nearly 10 degrees, 147 yard carry. Club speed is down to 89.9. And then the final one of the uglies, the death zones, 164.9 carry, 91.1 ball speed, swinging across at 5.7 degrees. Here's one of the good ones, 173.3, 96 mile an hour club head speed. Then here we go with another beauty. By the way, if you notice the green and reds 
don't th think too much about them. I got it set for certain ranges. I think I've got it set for driver right now, so those numbers are going to be a little different. But these path numbers are good. They're in the green. I like them when they're in the green. Here's that long one, 194.8. That was 96 mile an hour clip at speed, 1.7 degrees out to the right, so in the happy zone again. You're going to find that the ones I hit best are holding on that line. The ones I hit worst are not holding on that line. So we're going to look at training the downswing. What do we need to do to have a good downswing? Well, you don't need to worry about launch monitors or anything. And this is certainly a great place to start. Another thing that will train you to hit the ball really well is this magical lag shot training aid. Without thinking, it will get your downswing on the proper path so you can stay in the happy zone all day long. It means playing the best golf of your life in the happy zone. With this lag shot, you've got a weighted head and a whippy shaft. This head is so weighted, but you can also hit golf balls with it. So the shaft is rated to hit balls. This is awesome because when you practice, you'll be feeling the swing you need to have while hitting balls. How many of you have trouble with your practice swing and your real swing being two different swings? Like, oh man, if I could only hit the ball in my practice swing, I'd be a great golfer. Yeah, I hear that all the time. This is where you can actually hit the ball and get that practice swing to be your real swing. So with the lag shot here, with the weighted head, for you to feel the correct downswing, it has to feel like a smooth swing with the lag shot. You can see as I'm swinging through here smoothly that the weight of the club is naturally directing it into the happy zone and through impact. But if I try and hit into the death zone, I feel a diving sensation with this club head. It's like all of the weight of the world is just going down. So, and then it's across and it's ugly. You can hit balls with this and it won't let you hit bad shots. That's why this is like having your own instructor at home with this lag shot. If I try and go to the death zone, I don't even want to hit the ball because there's no way it's going to hit the ball. I'll probably hit me. I'm not wearing a cup today either. I feel it going down in the death zone. It's death. I can only really hit balls with this in the happy zone because if the club's staying behind me. I could never hit it with it in the death zone. And this is great because how many of us want that real-time feedback of a launch monitor or something? A training aid like this, where you can hit balls, priceless. Feeling it nice and smooth, club heads behind me. Wow, effortless. And you'll be getting that sensation of the club staying behind you. You'll know right away when it's not right. Death zone always res results in this rushing jerk motion down towards the ball. Happy zone always seems to result in that smoothness. It's like the golf swing was designed for us to feel it smooth, right? It's like this whole time, if we were feeling the swing smooth, we got the club on the right path and the lag shot's telling me how to do that. Get your very own lag shot. Look at the link in the comments in the description below. You get a nice discount on it by using the link there. So be sure to do that because this is priceless. I hope you can hear that. It trains the downswing. It trains a lot of parts of your golf swing. You probably saw me use it in a few other episodes. If you don't have one of these, get one because how many times do you want that direct feedback? This will train you to have a good downswing. Then you'll take it to the club and we'll be keeping it in the happy zone all day long. There's a draw. That is going far too. And you see, I'm not putting a whole lot of effort into my swings because you don't need to. We get the club in the happy zone, it does all the work for you. Another draw. This is probably one of the most valuable things you could do as a golfer right now. And if you really want to iron this out, you want to do this shot after shot. The lag shot will get you there. Another thing that will get you there is my complete online golf swing training program at segudo.golf. It will walk you step by step how to build your swing to do beautiful contact like that, shot after shot so you can play the best golf of your life right now. Life's too short to play bad golf, so don't wait. Start playing the best golf of your life with Segudo.golf. I'll see you in a future episode. You don't have to spend 10,000 hours working on your game, hitting a million balls a week to play great golf. All you need to do is this simple 30 second swing change that will change your life. I'm talking about something that helped one of my students who was a regular 90s golfer. After giving him this simple change, he went out and played the round of his life, shot a 79. You'll stripe the ball, you'll hit it with tons of power, you'll outdrive your friends. The laundry list of great things this is going to do for your game is darn near infinite. What I want you to think about 
is the shoulders always moving. Ball striking problems happen when these things stop moving. So if I'm swinging and I'm going to my downswing and then the shoulder just drops, that club is going into the ground. Watch this. I'm going to stop the shoulder. I mean, I, I can't. I can't get through the ball, and now I look like almost every golfer, every amateur golfer out there is just stopping the shoulder, flipping and falling back with their weight. That's not fun. To play great golf, we gotta keep the shoulder moving through. So if I keep my trail shoulder moving through, my right shoulder, I'm going to guarantee a good strike. Shoulder moving through. There it is. Listen to that. That is glorious. Can we hear that again? I bet we can't do that again. Just keep it moving through. Oh my goodness. Wow. You'll swear it's cheating, but what you're really doing is accessing one of the best things you can ever do in golf, which is using your shoulders correctly. Far too many golfers think about the downswing or the backswing, like, what do they do? Okay, do I use my body here? Do I use my arms here? If you think about the shoulders, you don't need to think anything else about positions. You're gonna hit all the positions. So as I swing back, shoulders. As I start down, shoulders. Do you see how my body just worked there? I'm not thinking about the body. Shoulders, shoulders. Everything's working. So I'm not thinking about, okay, lead with the hips in the downswing. Okay, turn with the hips. Okay, how much do I rotate? No, you can think about chilling out on a pool deck on the back of a cruise ship with your brain. If I keep the shoulders moving through, I will hit it and I will love it. And this is what that student did when he came to me. He said, Tom, I'm the most inconsistent golfer on the planet. And I said, come on. You know, look at his swing. And he's like doing this, clubs going steep and over the top and down. And then all of a sudden at impact, it looks like the colossal train wreck this and like the flip was so bad. I was gonna call him Flipper the Dolphin and he, he got a chuckle out of that. So we had to go from this kind of psycho golf move into this full extension, weight forward, tons of power. Yeah, that's what, that's what creates that, that eye candy in the ground, that beautiful strike with the ball. And so if you're over the top, well, what happens? The shoulder stops moving. If your arms are shortened up at impact, your shoulder stops moving. If you're S-ing the ball, we don't use the S word, shank, we don't use that word. Shoulder stops moving. I like to feel my shoulders by clasping my hands together, extending both arms off the body like this. My elbows are together, now I feel the shoulders. Look at that, I'm rocking them back and forth. Back swing, down swing. Back swing, down swing. Your shoulder's turning on, what is it? A circle. And then you want to do the same thing with the club. At no point do the shoulders stop moving. You will change your swing with this because you can't be over the top. If the shoulder stops, if it stops moving, you're over the top. So it's got to keep moving through. Now here's a bonus. This one is really what I love to do. Like my trail shoulder, my right shoulder, I like it to go through towards the target. Just keep it moving. Don't ever give the trail shoulder time to drop. If it drops, it's over, but if it keeps moving through, you are going to expect greatness. Like I can't miss, if I get the shoulder through before the body, I'm gold, I'm gold. Ooh, somebody is hitting drives over here. <laughs> They're shelling us. These are mashed. Whoosh and they're straight. The shoulder never stops. Don't stop your shoulder. Yeah. Oh, the shoulder up here keeps on turning. I know where that golf ball's going to go. The shoulder right here keeps on moving. Down, down, down. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> and then there it is again. I don't know the lyrics to that song. I just, you know, I never th thought we could throw Journey into a golf lesson until now. 
So this is really what I teach in the Segudo.golf online golf school. I got a free mini course to get you started on this. Check it out in the link there. But ultimately the school is gonna teach you what you need to create this shot for shot. Shoulders is a great piece of it. There's a few other things you need to get down to get down on the golf ball. Get down on it. We get to keep the shoulder moving through, so important. Oh. You remember why you got into golf? You fell in love, right? You, somebody gave you a club and then you probably took a lesson and then you go to the range with that little bucket of balls and you're, you're just wailing away. Maybe you missed like the first 10, 20 because it's the first time swinging. And then you hit the one on the middle. And then the feeling is, oh. maybe you're sitting there drooling. Oh, 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 I want to do that again. So then you pull out the, uh, the golf ball again and it doesn't happen because you say, what? Why can't I do it again? I just did it. Well, that's what happens. You get hooked and then you come to YouTube looking for golf tips to do that. And here we are. The shoulder keeps moving through the ball. I know where this golf ball is going to be tomorrow. Even today, it's going to be mashed. Oh, the sound. It's just great. Torched. <laughs> Can we just keep doing this? I will hit till I, st like, I'm going to hit balls until I, until I hit one bad. There's like 30 balls hitting, sitting here. Shoulders moving through. It, and it's not a chore, it never gets old. Set the shoulders, move the shoulders. These are all flying the same spot. Shoulders moving through. There it is again. It's almost laughable, the consistency of getting my right shoulder to move towards the target. And to change that, that student's life for the better. He's now playing the best golf of his life after 30 seconds. I can't believe this. It's amazing every time. Every time. I mean, I believe it, but like my swing in the past, my swing in the past used to be just like most golfers on YouTube. Hit, find it, not really satisfied. Hit, miss, hit, miss. It just never felt great. And then I settled on this swing system and life has been a joy. We're still hitting ball first, still hitting it solid. The shoulders keep moving through. Shoulder to the target, it's the only thing you need. Shoulders back, shoulders through. We are creating a nice line. Torched. It's pretty effortless too. I mean, I'm just kind of hitting these, sending them. Oh, the slightest thin, but still ball first. You can play with that. Oh, the slightest thin. Does that count as a miss hit? Nah. So slight. So slight. Oh, we'll get it back right there. Beautiful. Create the line, create the line. Get in the line, create the line, shoulders through. <sighs> this is awesome. I tell you all not to rapid fire balls. I'm just doing this because I wanna show you. Oh, there's, there was my miss hit. I'm talking though. Should we really count? I wanna show you how consistent this is. How much, how much I'm really thinking is zero. I'm just getting shoulders through. There we go. Wasn't talking on that one. Sometimes I can hit when I'm talking, sometimes I can't. It's like that whole, do you breathe in or out when you swing? Okay. That one was thin. I don't know how many shots that was, but it kind of rushed through that. Golf doesn't have to be this wasteland of, I'm searching. I'm searching. Come on, pure golf shot, where are you? Where are you? 
I'm searching for you. Oh, my love. Oh, you're in the tree up there, my love. So far away, there's a great chasm between us. Oh, golf gods, please give me your daughter to be my queen, the pure golf shot. And the king's like, just get your shoulders through, bro. And you could get up there and get a pure golf shot. Golf is this lovely soliloquy, this pursuit of perfection. You want to get like Shakespearean. It is between the lover and the beloved. <laughs> it really is. I mean, we're chasing after this. That is my lover or beloved. I'm not getting into that too deeply. Hey, you know, if you're enjoying this and, and you're hitting a pure golf shot, I want you to comment below. Just say, hey, I hit it pure. Just do that. Like the video, say I hit it pure, send it to your friends, they hit it pure. If we can create this chain reaction of pure golf shot golfers, then we won't have the problem of being miserable out in the world. Like people go to work and they say, oh, I just got another day of work and then I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna check my Facebook and then I'm gonna go golf miserably. Doesn't that sound so malaise? <laughs> Yeah, it's just the same cycle. I hate seeing the cycle. You need to get out there and just do this and you'll have so much more fun. Thanks for tuning in today, Sigurdo Golfers. And I'll see you in a future episode. So maybe you clicked on this video because your ball striking was inconsistent. Maybe you were having trouble hitting the ball left, right, straight. Maybe you weren't even taking a divot in front of the ball. Whatever it was, your ball striking was just meh. But to turn your ball striking from meh into we just have to think of one simple thing. There's a good chance that in your golf swing, you're falling back and your weight's moving back, and your arms are shortening up like this. Good ball striking happens though, when we do the opposite. The weight stays forward, the arm stays straight. Since you're used to falling back, which is the equivalent of retreating, retreat, fall back, through the golf shot, that leads to contact behind the ball, unsatisfying. Contact in front of the ball, which is the most satisfying, Yum. Yeah, give me some more of that. Happens when we think of not falling back, not retreating, but rather the opposite. Charge. Falling into it. Falling into the shot. Teaching your body to go from here to instead here. 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 So what am I doing? I'm teaching my body to fall forward. Fall forward and down. Because you need to train the opposite. When I start thinking about falling forward and down, I hit ball first. I take a really crispy strike with that ball. There's a divot on the front side of the ball. Life is good because that feels great. So how do we get you to fall into it? Take the club out of your hands first because we need to train what it's like to feel falling into the ball. So when I go to the top of my backswing, I want to imagine that I'm passing a basketball down and forward in front of the ball. I find it helps if you try and pass this to a spot in front of the ball. And it's out here about two or three feet. And for me to do that, I'm gonna fall forward with the weight. So this knee's moving down and forward, and I'm throwing the pass with the arms down and forward. So what do you get? Weight forward, you get arms straight. It's a great visual for ball striking. What's the old pass look like? The old pass is passing back here or maybe scooping up in the air. You're not throwing down and through. That's the difference. That's the difference that'll make you a great ball striker. The old, where you throw it, matters. The new, throwing it forward, throwing it down and forward. That's the feeling. You should probably be saying, oh yeah, you know what, that's different. I feel a change. The old way you don't like it means it's changing to the new way, which you're probably going to really love. So now I'm going to pass my basketball forward with a little chip shot here, top, down and forward, boom, there's my little pass. And that was a very solid strike. I will love that all day long. You can come back for some more. It's a buffet of crispy KFC. Falling into it, good strike. Then we start adding a little bit more of a backswing. But nothing changes, I'm here, falling into it. Try and keep your head in place. I'm exaggerating at some point, so it looks like my head's going down and forward. That's me exaggerating. I wanna feel it. I want you to feel it. But when you look on video, your head should not move. So that's a very important part of getting the feeling of down and through. Falling into it, my head's moving forward and down, 
my, my knees moving forward and down. Good strike. And the weight's forward, the arms are straight. That's a great feeling. This is actually something I really strive to build up in my online golf school, Segudo.golf. Solid contact, shot after shot. It has a structured learning program that builds your swing up to do that. Check it out in the link in the comments and description below. So you're falling forward, you're falling into it. You're seeing that this iron strike that you're feeling has changed. You should be seeing divots in front of the ball for the first time, maybe consistently for the first time for you. Maybe you've taken one divot before, two, but it's very rare. But now we're starting to see it. Oh, that's three out of four. That's seven out of 10. That's nine out of 10. That's almost 10 out of 10, then 10 out of 10 doing these drills. Then you keep doing that because it feels so good. This recipe would fix a lot of contact problems in the world. Falling into it. That's a very solid strike, leaving white marks on the center of the club face. That's why we play golf. And even if you have to exaggerate on a hit, now you won't hit it solid, literally falling forward and down. That's the feeling you need to have. You will hit it solid when you get that idea of it in your golf swing, keeping your head in place. So you'll get that solid divot You'll hit the ball first, you'll take a divot in front of the ball, shot after shot. So Segudo golfers, think about falling into the ball. If you're looking for a way to play the best golf of your life, check out my website, segudo.golf, that complete golf swing training program that will show you step by step how to build that into your golf swing to play great golf. Life is too short to play bad golf, so start playing the best golf of your life with segudo.golf. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you in a future episode. What you're about to see today has worked ball striking wonders for my students. Taking them from the inconsistent and chucking your clubs in the lake category into the consistent ball striking and fun category, fun golf, addicting feeling ball striking shot after shot. And it's a different way of looking at the golf swing. We're actually going to look at the golf swing backwards to help you play your best golf ever right now. The first thing I do with my students is look at contact. Are they taking a divot in front of the golf ball? Are they hitting the ball first, shot after shot? We start at contact, build the rest of the swing. Well, good contact happens when we can control the low point. That's where the club hits the ball, then we have a nice divot in front of the ball, the lowest point of that divot. That low point should be in the same spot every time. Two things will help you do that. First, the lead arm being straight. See, if this arm stays straight, the club will be allowed to return to the same spot shot after shot. So whether you've got a slightly bent arm or you've got a really long arm, as long as your arm stays the same length from start of your swing to top of back swing into down swing and through to here, the club will return to the same spot every time. The second thing is making sure that you stay centered over the golf ball. And by being centered I mean that we're not having a big shift off the ball in either direction with your head, your head's staying in place, your shoulders are staying in place, they're turning in a circle around a fixed point. Those two things will guarantee that you become a ball striking robot. And I've talked about those in some of my other episodes. But today we're looking at it differently. If we know that great ball striking happens when I've got myself staying centered over the ball with this arm staying straight, then we start from the finish. And we're gonna start actually just before the full finish, right about here after impact. If we look at the swing, and we look at your swing from after impact, we can fix almost everything back here. And it's amazing. So through impact, I want my arms to be straight, both arms fully extended. So we'll have tons of power with both arms fully extended three feet after the golf ball. You can hear that swath right there. I'm barely trying to move the club. It's actually just me extending the arms to straight. And there's a lot of power and some recoil. The next thing is the weight has to be forward. So nobody's having their weight back and their arms shortening up. This is most amateurs. Inconsistent. Inconsistent through the ball. But consistent through the ball is here. Pros all the time, all day long. Nobody hits off the back leg. We're all on the front leg. We've all got our arms straight. So if we know we need those pieces, then we need to just get there and stay there. This is what I want you to do first. Hold your arms out in front of you, extend them straight with the club in your hands. You see your elbows are together, closer together, both arms fully extended, 
and you should have 95% of your weight on the front side. Okay, great. How do we do that in the swing? I've got this feeling of where I need to be. Well, how do I do that from back here through to here? That's where the magic comes in. If you can force this position here, these two things, everything else behind it takes care of itself. So for me to get my arms to straight through the ball, I can't do any chopping at the ball. I wouldn't hit the ball. I can't do any over the top. I have to find a way to get them to go to here. I also can't flip at it or scoop. I have to find a way to get them to here. Same thing with my weight. If my weight stays fixed, there's no shifting back. My contact's going to be the same. So I'll start here, work my way back, keep my weight over the front side, and just force this position. Keeping contact the same every time. I've heard some people say, this finished position doesn't matter because you've already hit the golf ball. But what they don't understand is, for you to get here, you have to do things here. So if we can force this, this will happen. That's how it works. It's awesome. So we'll do a little short chip shot here, pitch shot, pretty aggressive. I'm just gonna force this. I've got my weight forward, forcing the arm straight through the shot. That was a really solid strike. 143 yard carry, almost 80 mile an hour clubhead speed for barely swinging at the ball. That's pretty cool. Then you would work your way up to like a three quarter or half shot. Same thing though, reverse engineer it. Starting here, okay, I need to force those elbows together and that weight staying forward no matter what. So I'm getting to that finish position, it's automatically improving the quality of my ball striking. And it should be improving the quality of yours as well because you're eliminating variables. We gotta get rid of variables. There's too many moving parts, let's get rid of them. We don't need them. Fewer moving parts equals more happiness on the golf course. Then we get up to that full swing level. What am I trying to do? I'm still gonna finish short here. That's my goal, this is my goal. These two things are your goal. Let's force the club into our goal position. It's going to force me to have good ball striking. Wait forward, arm straight. Ah, uh, the radar didn't get that one. Gotta wake you up. I love this thing. This radar is a game changer. Let's do it again. Woo! That was spanked. I stopped right where I was mentioning. Full extension of the arms, weight staying forward. Wow. 90 miles an hour club head speed, 190 carry. That was jacked. That's out of the park. That's out. That's out of polo ground, center field, 500 and something feet. Willie Mays wouldn't catch that one. What happens if I don't do that? Let's say I go back to this, flipping and falling back. This is the common thing I see with golfers, amateur golfers. Inconsistency, no fun. For me to get in that position, my weight's gotta go back, my arms have to shorten up, which means that back here, I've gotta flip and fall back like this. slowing down the club. Not very romantic, not a whole lot of fun. So I'm really limited in how much power I can apply to the shot because everything's slowing down into the hit. Working backwards, arms shortening. If I'm getting here with my arms shortening up, that means somewhere before impact here, I begin that process of getting to here. With the correct way of going through the ball, arms straight way forward, if I work backwards from this, for me to get there, I have to have lag, and I have to have the club go through like this, forward shuffling and through to here. So what happens after is most important because you can train how to change the pre-impact to affect the ball flight just by working on your post-impact. As you saw here, some incredible strikes, things change when I get into that correct finish position. My ball striking changes. It's so much more powerful getting to here. So there I am, rehearsed it, feel it, get there. Oh, I went a little too far. Don't call the cops on that one. That was a really good strike. I love that shot. You'll love it too. It works with all the clubs in the bag. Let me finish a little bit more like this again. 
That was powerful. Whew. Ball is coming off like a rocket. You can hear it in the distance. Watch, watch. Reverse engineer your golf swing to have the best golf of your life, best ball striking ever. If you're looking for a way to train and build up your swing to play the best golf of your life, check out my website, segudo.golf. It's a complete golf swing training program designed to help you build your swing step by step to hit the ball shot after shot crispy. Life is too short to play bad golf, so start playing the best golf of your life with segudo.golf. Thanks for tuning in today. I'll see you in a future episode. This tip right here has improved so many of my students' golf swings, and I'm excited to share it with you. Really solid strike right there. This elbow in the golf swing, what makes it so magical? Well, there's at least two things I can share with you right now. Power and consistency. I want you to think about when you punch something. Usually, your arm is tucked in and then extends fully. This is a power move, boom, boom. Boom. Similarly, in the golf swing, when we fold this arm, it's doing the same thing. We're storing power so that we can use it through the ball after impact. That's a tremendous amount of speed. The same thing applies to consistent ball striking. If you want to take a divot in front of the ball and really hit it crispy, we need this arm to stay tucked longer and explode through the ball. If this arm gets straight too early, we hit behind the ball or we scoop and we flip. Things that are not a lot of fun for your ball striking. If I focus on keeping this elbow tucked and exploding through the golf ball, I will have consistently solid, powerful ball striking. I barely swung at that and there was a ton of speed. When you want to get maximum power in your golf swing, we should start here. Go to the top of your backswing where it is right now, and if you find that your club is angled vertically, even at the biggest part of your backswing where it's complete, we need to make a little bit of a change. And that change is this, tuck in the elbow. So once I get this tucked in, when I go to the top of the backswing, you should see a much fuller looking golf swing. No longer here with the club, but here, a much bigger wrist hinge. And this angle is also sharper, closer together, not so wide. And you don't want the club to get wide because that spells danger. For one, we don't have any power stored. And for two, inconsistency again. This arm's getting straight behind the ball. So I'm flipping out with my hands and I have no power. So golfing misery, golfing happiness. Two very different motions. Go to the top of your backswing without a club in your hands. We're doing without a club first. You always want to train this without a club. Feel the motion. Fold this arm, tuck it in like that. Just get it tucked in. Don't leave it out. Tuck it in, elbow pointing at the hip. And as I swing to the top, fold it to 90 degrees right there. Once you've got that 90 degrees, it is fully loaded. No need to go beyond. Just here. That's fine. That's the max. And once you've got that, Start your downswing and move to about the point where you're almost going to hit the ball. The club will be angled over here. That's what we're working on right there. This move will change your ball striking. Get that elbow tucked in. It's still tucked in here. You see that? It's not falling out. It's staying tucked in almost against my side. I'm still connected with my arm against my armpit, tucked into here, and then I explode all of that energy through the golf ball aggressively. Now, pick up the fancy club. We're going to do the same thing. Tucked in arm, top of backswing, bring it down to here. It's still tucked in. For a lot of you, this will feel very weird because most amateur golfers I see have this elbow pulling out and arm straightening early, something like this. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but this type of motion is your slices and your pulls and your chuck and your clubs into the lake motion. 
this tucked in and through the ball is the land of milk and honey for your ball strike. We're gonna hit some shots just like I'm doing right here. And all I'm doing is segmenting the swing out, top, keeping the elbow tucked in, and then I want to extend my arm fully to straight through the shot. And I'm feeling very crispy strikes with the ball. I'm feeling ball first divot, ball first divot. It's okay if at first you're not hitting the ground in front of the ball. You're learning a new move, so give yourself a little bit of a break there. Practice without the ball first. Tucking it in, and boom. Extending the arm to straight, out in front of the ball. Out in front of the ball, boom. I'm hearing, hearing a nice thud on the grass. With that club. If you're not hitting the grass, you need to extend that arm more powerfully through the shot. We're throwing the power down and through the golf ball, down and through, boom. Down and through, down and through. You see that motion? Folding and exploding that arm through impact. And you can feel the power. It's like this. That's a tremendous amount of speed. Once you've done that, we can then apply it to the full swing. So we're no longer keeping that arm too straight. We're gonna allow it to fold and we're gonna keep it folded. Keep it tucked in, boom, tucked in. Tucked in, tucked in, and then swing. Tuck it in. Mmm, that sounded like a rocket. Boosh. Boosh. It was a rocket. Why don't we just do it again because that was a whole lot of fun. Tucked in, send it. Another really solid strike right there. Ball striking awesomeness. By the way, I've got a free mini course, top three keys. You need to be a great ball striker. It's at go.segudo.golf. Check it out in the link in the comments and description below. It will help you improve your ball striking. So we're keeping this tucked in longer. And the magic of keeping it tucked in longer is as you're seeing on the screen, a tremendous amount of power applied to the ball and the ball is exploding off the club face into the distance. And your friends are saying, oh, What'd you do overnight, man? We want some of that. That's what's happening. Ball's going down the fairway 20 yards past them. And then you're gonna keep it a secret, of course, for a few days while you dominate them in your weekly matches. You just keep sending it. And you're smiling, sending it, making your birdies and your pars. You look like the sandbagger out there because your game just got so much better overnight. So it's a very simple tip. And I've seen this change a ton of golf swings. I've seen people go from here with no wrist hinge to a fully powerful backswing, to keeping this tucked, to exploding the club through the ball. And they're saying, wow, I just dropped 15 shots. I went from 92 to 77. It's crazy, but it happens because this move is that profound in your golf swing. Keeping the elbow tucked versus untucked. Just tuck it in and you're gonna be playing some great golf. So thanks for tuning in today. If you want to play your best golf right now, check out my website, segudo.golf. It's a complete golf swing training program designed to help you step-by-step -step build your swing up, hit shot after shot crispy. Life is too short to play bad golf. So start playing the best golf of your life with segudo.golf. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in a future episode. Good strike right there. Hitting off of the front leg or the back leg. This very concept completely changed my ball striking and it will also transform yours for the better. I went through a really rough period of inconsistency for about five years. I was hitting behind the ball, in front of the ball, good, bad, ugly, everything. And I was trying to get myself shifting back and shifting through, hit the ball because I was told that this would give me more power. And then one day, after having enough of that, a pro came along and said, hey, why don't you focus on hitting off of your front leg 
instead of your back leg. And I had really never given the idea a thought because everybody at that point had told me, you gotta play golf off of your back leg and then get back to your front side. And then what happened was this miraculous transformation. Instead of shifting and hitting all over the place, I was told, get more over the ball and hit off of the front side. What resulted was consistent ball first strikes taking a crispy divot in front of the golf ball with even more power than I had before when I was hitting off of my backside. And why did this happen? This just blew my mind completely that I had been trying to coordinate a shifting of weight between my feet for so long, my whole golf life, up to this point. And then it occurred to me, well, we're moving variables here, and the golf swing is a circle. So your most important thing in golf is right here, contact. Your ability to control contact, to control how this club comes into the ground, to take that crispy divot in front of the ball, shot after shot after shot after shot like you see on TV, and it feels really good. And there was no secret to it. It just made sense. If you shift, and if your head moves off the ball, your contact is then shifting. So if I'm shifting, I'm hitting back here. If I didn't shift back to the ball, if I just shifted and I swung from this point, I would hit behind the ball every time. Or I'd scoop and hit it thin. That's romantic. How many of you seen that shot before? It's not a lot of fun. Or if I shift back the right amount, I can then time it up and hit the ball well. But there's that word, time it up. And I don't like time it up in golf. Timing in golf, we need to minimize timing. Timing's too hard to coordinate. If I wanna go on a cruise ship for a month and come back, I want my golf game to be in the same spot that it was before I left. That's what happens when you shift from hitting off the back side to the front side. So now hitting off the front side, what changes? Well, everything in your life. One, it feels weird at first, but two, if you keep your weight over the front side, it keeps your head over the ball, and then you return the club to the same spot every time. And it's a really powerful strike. It's not like we're hitting ground balls in the dirt here. You just saw me hit that seven iron there 185 yards, carrying. That's not a whole lot of effort. That's because I compressed it really well. The weight on the front side helps you to do that. And so staying over the front side ended up being the best thing ever. It was like steak, a nice prime rib, a good cut of meat. Because then I can start hitting the ball first every time. I start taking a divot in front of the ball every time. My consistency went through the roof and your consistency too. A lot of golfers are afraid to put their weight more on the front side because they're told in all the other magazines, don't do that. But really what you're trying to do is stay centered in the golf swing. So weight on the front side isn't something you should be afraid of. It's actually the norm. For all golfers on tour, the best ball strikers, weight on the front side is something we see day after day. If you look at the legs, the knees are not talked about enough on TV. The best ball strikers, will have a front knee that's lower than the trail knee. And whether the player starts from a position like this, maybe they're more over the ball. In either case, the knees have this type of look to them. Front knee going lower, trail knee going higher. And for you to have that, you have to have weight on the front side. What is pushing down? Well, how could there be more weight? Well, it's obvious, it's like a scale. They're pushing more down to the front leg. That's the only way you can get that knee to go down. And if we look at the rear, the tailbone view, now this is romantic. The tailbone is moving targetward because the hips are turning, the knee's going down. It's not a secret. It's just how the body's working. Your body's a chain, it's making a reaction. So as I keep my body centered and I swing, whether I feel a shift off the ball, if I stay centered, I still have to get weight left. I can't really shift or sway this way. No, because then I'm off the ball. 
If you feel a little bit of pressure into this side, pressure is not weight. Feel pressure into this side, your weight's still forward. A lot of golfers are thinking that they need this shift. But if we watch the best ball strikers of all time, and the ones on TV right now, we're seeing this with their knees. Front knee going down, trail knee going up. Now we're seeing that with the tailbone. Tailbone going to the target, never going away. When we look at what causes inconsistent ball striking, it's the opposite of these things. It is hitting off of the back leg, staying on the back leg, shortening the arms. So hitting off the back leg and shortening up the arms usually results in a little pull cut or a pull or a slice. And it's not very powerful. And if I just change my program, if I don't change my swing, I just change which side I hit off of, it dramatically changes the contact of my ball and distance. So now we're no longer hitting off of this leg, but we're staying over this leg. Same swing as before. I bet we're gonna see a very different result. Same swing, same effort. I just hit off of the front side on this one. I hit off of my trail side on the other one. What would you rather have? Well, if you're after playing the best golf of your life, the front side is the most consistent, crispy place to hit from. And this works with all of your clubs. Really nice strike right there. And I know this club is going to come into the ground the same spot every time. I've got a ton of confidence in that because I'm no longer coordinating a shifting or swaying move. Some very solid strikes right here. So if your ball striking isn't quite where you want it, think about hitting off of that front side, making that change like I did. Change my life for the better. In fact, it's one of the reasons why I'm here teaching you golf, to help you play the best golf of your life. So if you're looking for a way to do that, check out my online golf school, sugudo.golf. It's a complete golf swing training program that builds your swing step by step to help you hit shot after shot crispy. Life is far too short to play bad golf. So start playing the best golf of your life with sugudo.golf. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in a future episode. If you overthink the golf swing, your swing probably feels like this on the inside. It feels like gibbery mess. Try to put the club in all these positions. Your brain is just clouded with tips. You don't know what to do. How do you get the club on the proper path? How do you just have fun? I just want to play good golf. The way you do that is you learn how to get the club on one path instead of many. So in today's episode, you're going to go from thinking too much and we're going to put all our thoughts in the shredder. You'll have one swing thought that works all day long. And it's going to get crispy ball striking, shot after shot. We're thinking about the hands. Oh, that feels so good. And you'll be doing that time and time again. It doesn't get any better than that. That makes you want to go play golf. Those top shots don't make you want to play golf, but those shots make you want to play golf. So what did I think to execute that shot while talking to you at the same time? I wasn't thinking much about the swing. I was thinking about the hands. And that's because there's a concept here that's so important to the golf swing, and most of you don't know this one. And that's what the hands are doing versus what the club is doing. I want you to think about the club as the puppet. And I want you to think about the grip as the puppeteer. The puppeteer tells the puppet what to do. Most of us tend to think about just the puppet. We think about everything the club is doing, but we often don't think about the puppeteer, which is the hands. If you want to get a good backswing, a good backswing is one where your hands travel up a path much like this, and the hands are behind the trail shoulder. It's like a diagonal upward line. And then the downswing, the same line back to the ball. It's very direct, right? I don't have to think about dropping the club and then hitting or rolling my hands. It's so simple. It's one line. 
The puppeteer follows that one line. It tells the puppet. The hands tell the club head where to go. When you think about moving your hands on this line, you hit all the positions. It's going to feel like magic. So here's my hands. The hands go up on this type of line. From the front, you can see it like this. Now the club head is going to follow that as if by magic. That's the line I gotta be on. So then I think about my hand path. Hands tracing up on that line and back down on that line. Good downswing. Club head's behind the hands over here. Bad downswing is when we try and be the puppet. We try and hit the ball with the club head. But we hit the ball with the hands telling the club head what to do. And that's what makes golf so different from every sport. We often are thinking about trying to hit the ball with the club head. We place our feeling in the club head. That's the problem. We're here in our minds. And so we want the club head to go to the ball. And so I'm, I'm taking the club head to the ball. But you can see how that produces chopping it over the top. It can produce flipping. But the opposite is to think, and it's so backwards, you don't hit the ball with the club head. We don't feel the club head. We're always feeling the grip. So I have to know where the grip needs to go, not where the club head needs to go. So I need the grip to go up here. The club follows. Tell the grip what to do. Tell the hands what to do and the club head will follow. Club head going up, club head going down. And I can feel the backswing on the same path. I feel the downswing on the same path. Now that wasn't the best strike. I know I can do better than that. I'm sorry. It isn't easy to talk and swing all the time, but there's the path. There's the path. There we go. Oh, that's why we play. And I've got the hands on one path. Take out a handy dandy alignment stick driveway marker, the best training aid in golf. It's $2 and somebody said 23 cents the other day. It's probably gone up from like $1.96 to $2.23. So anyway, still the best training in golf. We've got two things to think about here. We got the ball, which we want to hit, so lovely. We've got the hand path, which we're controlling. For us to get this right, we need to feel the hand path, not the club. So the hands, when I set up to the ball, are in line with this stick. They're not out here with the club. So there's the hand path. And the angle of the hands is a little bit inward and upward. The longer the club, the lower it goes. I want to feel my hands tracing up on this line. And voila, the club traces it perfectly. And then downswing, back on that line. Voila, downswing taken care of. Wow. I'm just blown away at how simple that is. I know when I thought about doing this episode today, I, I thought it couldn't really be this simple, but I'm just coming to that realization that this is like, cheating for the golf swing. Kind of reminds me of that little Ben Hogan pane of glass example, but a little slightly different. Hands going up that line, hands going down that line, and then I get to beautiful impact position, hands are ahead. So I'm thinking about that stick. And you just trace that line a few times, and then we'll hit a shot like that. Okay, that's the line, that's the line. I'm seeing out of my peripheral vision, so at first you need to get used to where the proper hand path is. I'm trying to feel it in my mind's eye. That was a good shot, his strike. Going to the target, felt like butter. Okay, now that I've felt that, I'm gonna try and recreate that without thinking. Good strike, that's even better. Whoosh! Oh, you love that sound. That's why we play golf. It makes you wanna do it again and again and again. Hands, hands, hands. That's another one right to the target, beautiful strike. Not a whole lot of effort, creating a nice line of divots. So that's a great starting point for you to build up a perfect golf swing. The perfect golf swing that works best for you. The second thing we're gonna do is take out my favorite. This builds up your swing easily. It's called a lag shot. It's a weighted club head and a whippy shaft. If you want to feel a good golf swing, the lag shot will teach you much like a teaching pro. It's like having your own personal in-home golf instructor. Now, how does the lag shot fit in with today's lesson? Well, the lag shot works best 
when it feels lightest. When it feels heaviest, it means your club is off path. So when I swing, I take the path of least resistance, the hand's going up this way. But if I take a path that's not the correct path, like if I take my hands in too much, the club gets really heavy. Ooh, it's weighing down, it's drooping. If I take it way out, it gets more heavy, it just droops. So I can only swing this club, the lag shot, on the proper backswing path, it's the lightest here, and then a downswing, same way, it's the lightest here. So I can't drop the club too much, it gets too heavy. And I also can't swing over the top because then whew, it wants to swing in and hit me in the pants. I'm not wearing a cup, you know that. We don't want that. So if I have the lag shot feeling the lightest possible, I will train the proper golf swing motion for me. I'll know the path I need the club to swing on. So it's lightest here, lightest here, and there we go. That's the path the club needs to be on. And you see it going to my target, as if by magic. But it's really just me t saying to my hands, okay, hands, tell the club head the, la the lightest path here, the, le the path of least resistance, the lightest path is this one, back and through. That means it's the most efficient path, so keep it light. Flag shot being light is telling you everything is on perfect path. You don't need to video your swing either. Keep it light, keep it light. I'm not trying to swing hard or anything. I'm just being aware of the weight of it. I've got a link to this in the comments in the description below. You get a nice discount when you use the link that I've got there. So I've got the feeling of the club staying light. Lag shot, you just taught me beautifully, like having my own instructor there. You know, you could go take thousands of lessons, someone telling you to get in the correct positions, or you can just get a lag shot and it already puts you in them all the time. And you just keep swinging, you swing at home. Make like 10 swings at home with it. And do that a minute a day, or 15 seconds a day, to have the proper path, to have a lot more fun. So we've got that club feeling light. There's that lag shot path again right there. Wow, I, oh, I just felt something there. It feels like the lag shot just created a railroad of where my hands should go. Like, like the feeling was so good that I can only feel the right path right now. I know that if I go on the wrong path, I can feel that lag shot drooping sensation that I just had a few moments ago. Or if I go too far out, I can, I can feel it drooping the wrong direction. The club's getting heavy. Oh, that's so gold. That's so gold. This is why it's consistently voted the best training aid. It's teaching. So let's get it again. I don't want to lose this feeling. Never going to give you up. Never going to let you down. Thank you, lag shot. And then it's light here. Okay, it's really light here, it's too heavy here, it's too heavy there. And the weight of this thing, oh, I can't lose this feeling. Keep it light, keep it light. Oh, I chunked it, it felt heavy at one point. Black shot, don't let me fall into despair. What, you said you won't? I knew you wouldn't, don't let me down. Black shot talks to you too. Hands going up the proper path, it's staying nice and light. Okay, let's do it nice and slow. Keep it, keep it smooth, hand path. Stay light, stay light, stay light. Good. That was righteous. You know, you do this and you start feeling like Link Ray in Rumble. That was rocking. That was a lot of fun. That's what golf's supposed to be. When you do 10 swings a day with the lag shot, it's going to get the proper hand path feeling so that when you go out on the golf course, your golf swing stays automatic all day long. Thanks for tuning in today, and I'll see you in a future episode.